Hello, welcome to another Zozin stream. How about that? But you do expect yet another Zozin stream on this week. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, Belgianul, Lost E, Thrash 5. I hope you exercise today. Masters, by the way, I would do Iron 6969, Poppy Chan, Cerimon, uh, Sasalala. Hello, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Really glad to see you all today. So today is Saturday and today I felt like uh, programming in a uh, very interesting language. Hello Keku Gaming, AWS Key, um, Mcore69, Benny Darshan, hello, 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 welcome everyone. So yeah, so uh, the previous year uh, we were doing Advent of Code 2020. You can actually find uh, the source code for all of the solutions in here, right? So, an Advent of Code of 2020 was very interesting for me because I was doing a 25 different languages challenge, right? So, for each problem, I was using a different language and there were a lot of languages that I never programmed before. So, I jumped into them like completely blindly. And one of those languages was Ada. And I think Ada actually fascinated me. And, well, there's no, nothing particularly like special about this language except I didn't expect it to be a good language. I, like it's, it's actually like a proper language of the level of C, C++, D or Rust, but it's such an old language, seriously. Like it's from 80s, I think. I think it's from 80s. It's a very old language, but at the same time, it has a lot of modern features. Um, so I just like, it, it caught me slightly off guard that it's going to be such a good of a language, even though it has a very boomerish syntax, if you know what I mean, like very Pascalish one, I would even say. You see, it's, it's kind of verbose, it's like 80s syntax, the uh, the syntax of SQL and other boomer languages and Pascal and stuff like that. Nobody actually like designs syntax like that anymore. C style syntax took over everything. And um, yeah, so we, we don't really see this kind of stuff often. Um, and um, yeah, so what I decided to do at some point is to look deeper into this language uh, because it's a very interesting language. It's in fact a very interesting language. It has a very interesting history. So some people say, well, a lot of people say that it's a basically language for uh, US military uh, department <laughs> because it's technically easy. I think it was commissioned by US military to one of the French computer scientists to design a language for them so they can use that language everywhere and it would be standardized. Um, so yeah, today a Russian hacker is gonna program in a language designed for US military. And let's see how many elections we're gonna hack. I'm, I'm joking, of course, it's just, just a joke. Um, so yeah, uh, furthermore, there is interesting um, a framework for, for this language. It's called AWS, believe it or not. <laughs> yes, AWS is not Amazon Web Services in this particular context. It's a framework for ADA and it stands for ADA Web Server. Right, so, and I'm not even joking, it's literally called AWS ADA Web Server. Uh, so, and uh, among the authors, there's also a Russian dude. So, as you can see, Russians infiltrated, uh, like, US military a long time ago. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> ah. So, yeah, it can do, well, it, it can do very, very scary stuff, like SOAP and WSDL. Uh, but on top of that, it can do HTTPS and SSL and... Uh, Hot plug gacha gasm? A oh, hot plug modules. Okay, okay, so they can also do hot plug modules. So, and overall, it's like a web framework. I think it can do even more. Um, I think I saw like web sockets at some point. Mm, and also, it could be like a, a web client. So, yeah. Uh, let's take a look into that. Oh, another interesting thing. Another interesting thing. Uh, hello, Soding 2S. Hello, hello, Stop Gaming 50. Hello, hello. Um, all right. Search Leap AWS. Keep in mind that ADA is a language designed for US military, and it's a really underrated language, and not that many people know about it. But Leap AWS is just casually available in the 
repo of Debian stable. It's just there being available. It's really strange. Like, um, you wouldn't expect for such unpopular obscure languages like to have any kind of support for anything, but it's just there. It's in the, it's in Debian, and there's like other compilers, and also other uses special build tool. As far as I know, it's called uh, GPR build, uh, GPR build, and it's also available there. Mm. So yeah, it's um, and all of that is developed by a company or organization called Adacore. Um, right. So Adacore like has a proper. Um, proper web framework, a special build tool, and uh, they have an interesting website that has a very interesting theme. It has like this military theme. And once you look deeper into that, it starts to feel like, like somebody puts a lot of money into this shit. Like somebody actually like makes sure that it's supported properly where it's needed. Which makes it kind of creepy, to be fair. Like, it's it's really strange. And at, at the same time, it's not that well known, right? Like, who knows about Ada? Who knows about this language? Nobody knows about it. But at the same time, you want to program it. There you go. You, you have all the support. Like, all the tools is just there. You just program it. There you go. So, 20% of your smooth budget is going to five for me, made programmers. <laughs> yes. So to be fair, like it feels a little bit creepy to me for some reason, uh, but yeah. <clears throat> uh, how long have you been coding? Uh, you can check out my FAQ. It's actually written in FAQ. Um, is Luminati of programming languages confirmed? Yeah, that's true. So um, from some, <coughs> excuse me. Um, Oh, we have Anson Plots. Welcome to the stream. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're looking at the... Um... <gasps> oh, the fuck? I need some tea. We're looking at US military language. Uh, the most Keikona language you will encounter here. To be fair, it's not particularly Keikona language. It was designed by a French person. It was literally designed by European for US. Um... All right, so let's actually pour a cup of tea. Mm. <laughs> I was, I'm just thinking, how did they manage to make a French computer scientist to design a language for US? Uh, my theory is they promised that they're going to use this language to, to write software against UK. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, <clears throat> um, um, okay, so let's actually install G a GPR build and uh, learn it and see how, how we're supposed to use it because, um, yeah. Uh, GPR build is also developed by the same company, by the way. It's also developed by Ada Core, um, and it feels like this is like the company. That, and again, we have another Russian person in here. Is that the same Russian? Is that the same Russian person? So the first one, um, Anizimkov. Yeah, it's it's the same Russian. So <laughs> what the hell is going on? Why Russians are developing infrastructure for U.S. military language? I'm telling you, they, they are infiltrated the U.S. military. Uh, all right, uh, GPR build, and let's install this thing and see if it's going to be successful. We're about to find out. Oh, we already installed it. Uh, I guess I was already trying to do things with it. Okay, so I don't really have a particular goal for today. Uh, I just want to try uh, AWS. So I'm going to go to the prop folder where I prop things. And we're going to put um, Ada AWS. All right. So let's see how intuitive this tool is. Right. So I'm all about, you know, intuitive usage of tools without reading any documentation. So we have uh, a, G, uh, a GPR build. I'm running it. I'm running it. What is it going to do? Using project, uh, this thing. Okay. Warning, there is no sources of language Ada in this project. Uh, GPR build no sources to uh, to compile. Okay, if I do help, 
Um, Russians that were recruited by CIA are recruiting Sony now. Probably. Maybe this is basically their way of recruiting people, right? So they just put out these languages out there and see who got debated by them and start programming in them and then BOOM! Something similar to FUBAR uh, from Google happens. You just program in uh, one day and, you know, the panel just shifts up and show you, show you like, the message. Psst. What, what, what I work for? US military? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Uh, you know, so something like that has gonna happen to me as well. Ah, uh, yes. <clears throat> uh, so what do we have? What kind of flags do we have? Um, uh, can I generate like a new project? Okay, so you have P proj, and you need some sort of a GPR file, right? You need some sort of a GPR file. Mm, can I do something like? new aha uh -huh. init aha uh -huh. generate aha uh -huh. okay so by itself this tool is not that intuitive so you need to read documentation all right uh, so this is a documentation for how to build the build tool documentation provided in the various formats in the doc subdirectory you can also find it online okay let's take a look at the online documentation uh, so building with projects, thinking in portals. Uh, okay, there's a very simple example and as stated above, the simple project file is sufficient. Project build is end build. Okay, so this is the simplest, uh, simplest project that you can have. Build GPR, project build is end build. Cool. Let's go ahead and put it there. Return. Return void. <clears throat> so it has to be build GPR. And it feels like the GPR files are actually expressed in Ada-like language as well. So yeah, project build is hmm. end build. So why is it highlighting is and end? What kind of... Oh, it automatically... Okay, so Vim knows GPR files and it recognizes GPR files as ADA files. Okay. So if I don't have any source code, will it do anything? So using... Okay, so it recognizes the build GPR, GPR file and there is no source code of language ADA in this project, no sources to compile. Okay, so let's actually introduce something like hello ADB. Right, and let's write a simple hello world. I forgot how to write hello worlds to be fair. Um, so uh, we can actually stall some source code from the um, advent of code in here. Uh, to, 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 to advent of code in here. So you, you probably start with uh, importing the text IO thingy. Uh, it's gonna be use ada text IO and use ada text io there we go then we start with the procedure right so we're gonna have a procedure uh, main is and it also has a begin and end right and also you have to print something uh, you put line put line and then something like hello world this is not how we put hello world here but there we go so we have a source code, which is essentially the, uh, you know, hello world. Yeah, GPR build, what's gonna happen? Okay, uh, ADA is undefined, more reference follow missing with ADA text.io file name does not match, unit name should be main ADB. Uh, okay, so all of these are warnings, right? So compilation phase, um, let me rename. Um, some of this stuff. So there's std error and std io. Um, I like how standard for ADA is Pascal snake case. To be fair, I really like a standard pas uh, like a Pascal snake case. Sue me. Report me to Twitch for liking Pascal snake case. <clears throat> All right. So let's remove this shit. Sorry, Zozing, but I had to report you for uh, liking Pascal's <laughs> Pascal case. <laughs> 
All right. So uh, let me rename this. Hello, Ada. Oh, did I put it Ada underscore? I didn't think so. No, I don't think so. Sodium smoke. Uh, main ADB. Move main ADB and. Uh, so you'd. Yeah, yeah. So everything's okay. Everything's okay. GPR build. Okay. What's funny is that if I do something like uh, gnat make, right, gnat make, uh, and I just build this entire thing, it will probably build? Uh, add Ada. Okay, where did I fuck up? With... Ah! Oh my god. Okay, with. Thank you, thank you so much. Alright. So now we can try to do GPR build. GPR build and... First try, got Kuder. How about that? Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? I think it's goddamn fucking amazing, mate. And it didn't create an executable, it just created an object file. What the fuck? Uh, okay, so how do I create an executable? Is there any other things I have to do here? Um, okay. Oh, you can have a source, uh, like for source dears, use that. You know what? Is there any examples? Like, because I, I don't want to read this wall of text. Like, seriously, who wants to read the wall of text? I'm not a US military. Like, show me examples, okay? Just show me examples. Uh, Ada CPP. Okay, so you have SRC uh, and you have other things. Animals GPR, accept GPR, make file. Why do you need to make file if you have GPR? Um, okay, so basically you use different projects. I see. So animal GPR. So for source code, uh, use that. For languages, use Ada. For main, use main ADP. Aha. Uh -huh. Then you have package compiler. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. And I really like that you're literally just doing like a Ada essentially source code. Alrighty. So um, can I uh, remove some of this stuff that is not needed? Um, because I want to actually. Um, create a separate folder. So I'm also going to remove ALI files and O files. Build system that is written in the same language. Yes, it's so fucking rare these days. I mean, in C, C++ world specifically, like in C, C++, people don't know how to write a package manager or build system in C and C++ because they forgot how to program in these languages. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna do make src and we're gonna move main adp to src. So now we have that shit. So, and apparently, uh, project build build, um, let's actually rename uh, build to prop, right? So, because I think it will make a little bit more sense. Okay, so, and for source dears, for source dears use src so here's our source dear uh, we can also specify the language right for languages use only ada we're not gonna have anything else but apparently i can mix up ada and c c++ which is actually kind of cool so you can add additional uh, compiler switches uh, and also additional specifications and whatnot. Okay, so for main, for main, I suppose I'm gonna use main ADB, and that indicates that it will create an executable, hopefully. And uh, let's try to do that. GPR build, and is it compiled? File name does not match the project name, should be a probe GPR. Okay, so it tried to compile this thing, then did some binding back. Ali and then it linked this entire thing. Did it give me an executable? It did give me executable. We have a hello world built with GPR. I have no idea what the fuck is GPR build, but it managed to build something. It was actually pretty straightforward. We just followed examples and nothing bad has happened. Ah, hello, hello, Lemakoda. Hello. Okay, so um, we also need to move this thing to be probe gpr right so now it's that and i can do gpr build mm -hmm. there we go seems good seems good but it generates way too much garbage like holy shit it generates o files bexc files ali stdr std out 
an additional these files. Holy shit. Uh, Scott Death. Thank you. Thank you so much for two months of Twitch Prime subscription and welcome to our epic Tsojing Pog Club. Thank you so much. Cheers. Can we get some Tsojing Pogs in the chat for the new subscriber? Thank you. Thank you so much. Why can't it just generate garbage in a separate directory instead of the next to the GPR files? I suppose because it's a, some sort of a boomer tool. Or maybe it has a special switch where to put like build and stuff like that. So uh, you see for source dir uh, use that. Maybe you can have something like for build dir use uh, build. And it's probably not going to work, but it would be nice to have... Um, to, to have that so I can just basically put all of that somewhere so if I try to do that it will tell me and define attribute build here okay that makes sense so but maybe uh, this is something that can be done um oh wait a second I think I have an idea wait a second I'm gonna create build I'm gonna go into the build and I'm gonna do GPR build help right and if I remember correctly oh my god come on uh minus p right it had like some sort of minus p flag use project file yes gpr build minus p and uh, i'm gonna use this file is it gonna work and it actually didn't put any garbage okay so it, it left the garbage where it was <laughs> i tried to run it from a different directory and it still put the garbage where it, it was like it just does not allow you to put garbage anywhere else but at least we, we probably can git ignore it at some point somehow uh so it's never gonna go into into that um yeah so it's gonna git ignore and let's see what garbage we need to ignore we need to ignore uh b underscore underscore whatever that's supposed to fucking mean um, std error, uh, std out, ali, uh, bex, ch, and o files, and all of that is the stuff that we don't care about. Hopefully that will that will work. Um, okay, cool. Mm. Libraries. So because at some point we will need to link with the libraries so we need to know how to actually do that so library dear dynamic externally build use true uh oh it, it's just how to create libraries not how to build with libraries so okay um so do i have to install lws uh, lib uh, a lib a WS, yes, lib LWS. Let's see. Mm, search lib AWS. Mm. All right. So we'll definitely need to install the dev version of it, right? So because it will include all of the dev files and stuff like that. Mm. Mm. Okay. So let's go. Um, okay, uh, I also want to start with some examples on how to use this framework. So there, there are some demos, right? There are some demos. Uh, and there is a Hello World demo. Nice. So, and from the Hello World demo, we can see GPR, right? And GPR, huh, it doesn't even use anything special. Oh, it just says with WS. Hmm. This is very interesting. <clears throat> uh, and within the file itself, what do we do? What, what, what is the special thing we do? We import AWS default, AWS server. Um, right. So then we create an HTTP server, right? Uh, so we provide the server port. Uh, and then we start the server with the maximum amount connection of one with a particular callback. And the callback is defined in a different place. It's defined in here so uh, by the way there is an interesting thing here in ada there's two kind of files a um, adb and ads adb is like a c file and ads is a header file so this is like a um signatures it contains only signatures but doesn't contain any implementations and this one contains the bodies that's why it's b s for signature and b for the body right so it's like a header and the main file main source file mm -hmm. all right 
Uh, and uh, the callback that is called uh, is defined somewhere here. So here is the callback. Uh, so it accepts the request, which is the AWS status, and returns the response. Um, so it uses some sort of program and reference to request. I have no idea why, what is that, but we'll, we'll see. Um, and then you just return hello. Nice, without closed tag, because who fucking closes the tags in 2020, am I right? Uh, but yeah, so it's actually pretty straightforward, I would say. Uh, it's actually pretty straightforward. Mm -mm. Okay, uh, so we managed to uh, install everything here and um, let me see. Let's go into main ADB. And I don't really understand why we have to separate uh, this into like different modules and stuff because I could have this call back uh, within a single file. So it doesn't really make much sense. But anyway, so uh, let's go with AWS default with AWS server. Like, I, what's this is a really bad naming for a module. Like, you see, you see why it's bad? Because you look at it and you have no idea what is that supposed to mean, unless it's some sort of like ADA convention. Maybe in ADA there is a convention where you have like a default module within module and it does mean something. But when you look at it outside, you need to import AWS default. But what, what are you importing? Like, excuse me? When I'm importing AWS server, okay, I'm importing things that are related to servers. Okay, that makes sense. But what the fuck is default? Unless, again, it's a, some sort of a convention within AD community, but I actually doubt so. Um, all right. So, just my opinion on this kind of naming, and I think it's good. Um, all right. With um, AWS default and with AWS uh, server. Right. We're not going to separate uh, these files. I don't think it makes sense. Mm, so we take positive image server port. Ah, I think I know what it is. Okay, so like this, once you have this kind of thing, it starts to make way more sense. It basically contains default settings or something like that, right? So there is a uh, AWS default port. So, and these default, like, you know, settings are actually stored there. So that makes sense. And with a positive image, we're converting that value to a string so we can... Uh, we can print that value on the console and stuff like that. Is default is the default values? Probably, I think it's just default values. Um, that starts to make way more sense. All right. Next thing, uh, we need to create uh, AWS AWS server HTTP. So here it is. We created the server H. What the fuck? Vim. What the fuck is going on with you? Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, so we have a fresh take on the Ada being language of hell in Russian language. Yeah, it's like such a fresh, fresh joke that nobody ever said before. Uh, all right, so and then we have to do put uh, line. Uh, to be fair, uh, since I used like use, I don't have to specify the whole like um the whole thing here put a uh, line and uh call uh, call me on port call me on port so i probably want to remove this particular thing here uh, call me maybe <laughs> oh my god this chat is so funny today holy shit so many funny jokes uh positive <laughs> okay so here's an interesting thing like uh to convert uh, a number to convert a number to a string you call an image function i don't know why it is called image uh because it is something that you can display on the screen is that is that's why it's image uh who knows it's it's ada um mm, aws aws Default server server port. There we go. Uh, and uh, I will stop in 60 seconds. Interesting. So, and then you delay. Oh, shit. You start a server 
but then it starts like in a separate thread and you need to log that thread. Huh. How can I just wait forever? Is it is it possible to just wait forever? That would be actually way better in my opinion, but yeah. Um, so let's actually roll with this thing. Uh, I will... I will uh, stop in 60 seconds. There we go. So, and then I'm gonna put here. Uh, okay. Mm, delay 60. Okay, oh, delay is not a function. Look at that. Delay is not a function. So that means there's like some sort of like a built-in concurrency support, if you know what I mean. Built-in concurrency support. Mm. All right. So um, AWS server shut down. We're shutting down this server. Cool. Uh, but I also need to run it. So, and I also need to specify this callback. Um, it also has an access. So it's some sort of attribute. And this is very interesting. So we'll have to learn about that. So there's some, a couple of ADA features are used here that I'm not aware of, specifically this access thingy. Uh, and another one that I'm not aware of is this pragma and referenced request. So it's applied to request argument and I'm not really sure what that means. So we'll have to learn that at some point. You see, it's an educational stream. Uh, it's an educational stream. <clears throat> okay. AWS, uh, Ada can do, uh, can do OOP. Ada can do your mom. Ah, ah. <clears throat> okay, so server uh, start. You see, I'm also funny today. Mm -hmm. I'm also funny today. It's a very funny joke. Right. Hello, world. Uh, so, max connection. So, yeah, max connection. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Call back. Uh, hello, world, call back. HWCB. Oh, I don't know why they called it like that. Uh, why is it called like that? HWCB. Hmm. I'm not gonna follow that way. Uh, it's gonna be just called hello world callback then. So you see, uh, it, it has a keyword arguments like in Python. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, hello world uh, CB. And I suppose we need to do this access thingy that I don't really understand, but Vim knows about it. As you can see, it actually highlights this entire thing. So that means it's like a well-known thing in uh, in Ada that we'll have to learn at some point. We'll see, we'll see. Okay, so as far as I know, in Ada you can define functions like here, right? So you can just go ahead and define a new function here. And this is where I'm gonna define my callback, so I'm, I'm gonna keep everything within a single file. I think it's gonna be a little bit better. So I'm gonna define a function uh, hello world cb uh, and it's gonna accept a request it's gonna accept the request uh, which is aws aws status data which is kind of interesting have you ever actually imported aws status state status state what how do you how do you pronounce this yeah, you, you have to do these things. You have to do these things, otherwise uh, it's not gonna actually do anything. So you see some of the imports are defined in the signature file, uh, but they kind of like getting access through the body file. So yeah, I guess we're gonna roll with that. I guess we're gonna just roll with that. Um, all right, so, and then we're gonna say that this thing returns uh, AWS response response data right response data uh, is uh, and uh, we're starting to use this pragma thingy uh, not program pragma mm. unreferenced request mm -hmm. and and uh, I think 
you have to specify the name of the procedure at the end, but it's kind of redundant, like you don't have to do that in modern other anymore. All right, and then we're returning returning AWS, AWS response uh, build, All right? So this is the content type, so it has to be text HTML, and the constant uh, and the uh, the body is going to be uh, minus p hello world, All right? Hello world, but of course. Uh, we're going to close the tag, right? We're going to close the tag. We're not going to be barbarians as the author of this example. Holy fuck, look at that. This is absolutely fucking disgusting. Uh, Alright, so uh, we're going to actually close this tag. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I, guess, I guess that's it. So we have a single file and um, yeah. Let's see how miserably it will fail if we try to compile this. So it's going to be a GPR build and yes, AWS ADS not found. It's not found. So you cannot just use AWS in your program and think that's that's it. You don't have to do anything. You have to work with it. You have to deserve using AWS. Yes. So how can we deserve that? As far as I know, you just have to add additional thing in the uh, build file uh, with AWS. And hopefully it will pick up some stuff from the library that we installed using APT, if you know what I mean, right? So uh, with AWS, there we go. And will that help me? Ah. Uh. Subprogram must not be deeper than the access type. Oh shit, that's very interesting. So is that the access thingy that I actually put there? Is that the access thingy? Oh shit, it didn't actually allow me to, to jump there for some reason. Oh shit, and it actually didn't pre doesn't print the full path to the source code. Really? Fucking really like I mean it's located in SRC and it prints only oh my god such a pepega program holy shit Okay, luckily in CM I can actually probably fix that by uh, Just doing something like this. I'm gonna just put SRC here uh, Right so and if I try to do something like that there we go so luckily um, the uh, CM was developed by, you know, a professional who knows what they're doing. Okay, so there's something like some sort of a problem here. You cannot just do that, right? Uh, you cannot just do that. Uh, and if I try to do something like this, it's going to... Uh, missing argument for parameter request in call declared in... Uh -huh. So, wait a second. Ha. Huh. So it has to be an access. But what's interesting is that you cannot access this function just from here. And you cannot move it like there above, right? You cannot just move it there above uh, because you can only have like a one procedure per uh, object. So I think that's the reason why you have to separate it and the file expected. File can only have one compilation. Need. Okay, so this defines several compilation needs. So that means we'll have to separate this function into a separate module and there's nothing we can do about that. Whether we want it or not, this function has to go to a separate module. <sighs> okay, does anyone have any questions so far? <sighs> okay, let's, let's introduce this shit. Not quite understand why we have to separate all of this, uh, but uh, I guess we're going to separate all of this. Um, okay, so we'll have to define the signature file, and the signature file is just basically like a header file, right? Nothing, nothing particularly special. So it's pretty small in here, just like your PP. Uh, I'm just joking, of course. Uh, so uh, let's go to SRC, and it's going to be a uh, hello world. CBADS. All right. Response. So we have to import all of these things here. Uh, all of these things here. Package. Hello world. CB. By the way, does does anyone have any ideas what we need to develop with this uh, with this uh, framework? 
what kind of web application? So, do you guys know what we need to develop? I don't know. Um... Or maybe you should start developing a bot in, in Ada. Like, uh, Hudson Plus is developing a bot in D, and I'm gonna develop a bot in Ada. I think it's a good idea. So, and here we're gonna accept uh, the request uh, a WS state status uh, data. Bot in Ada, yeah. Sounds like an interesting idea to be fair. Uh, return. AWS mm, response data. Okay, so this is the signature. This is the whole signature. And uh, let's go back into ADB. It's going to be a lot of pain worse than Haskell, trust me. You already programmed in ADA? Uh, how do you know that it's going to be a lot of pain? So far, I'm programming in ADA and I don't see that much of a pain. So I'm not sure what exactly you're talking about. Um, there is a stale project that tries to implement Doom 3 engine in either so. So what? Um, I, I don't understand what you're talking about. How does it have, how does it all of that, what you say, have anything to do with my idea of using this language for a boat? Um, okay. Anyway, uh, so hello. You're just saying like random statements that don't mean anything like, okay. It doesn't. Oh, okay. Thank you. I, I wasn't just sure if you're trying to, you know, tell me that I shouldn't do that or something. Like, I wasn't sure. Um, okay. Mm, and hello world. CB. Uh, function. So here's the function. CB request. Um, AWS status data returns. AWS response response data is begin and hwcb I, we, we don't really have to do that anymore right we don't have to do that anymore and we just return lws uh, response build uh, is going to be text html and i wonder by the way if is there any like frameworks or libraries not necessarily frameworks i mean I'm, I'm sound I, I sound like a like a zoomer uh library that uh can work with json so can we return like instead of text html like application json so and develop some sort of a rest api uh, develop a Twitter app for your schedule. Uh, Twitter app, so what is it supposed to do? It's supposed to tweet out when I start streaming? Is that what it's supposed to do? Uh, probably, maybe, maybe we can do that. This is a new pork champ, Heroes and Plots. Welcome to the new reality. <laughs> ah, you are stuck in a wrong universe, Heroes and Plots, where pork champ is this. Welcome. Mm. All right, so this is what we have here, right? Mm -mm. Uh, so, um, do we need to import anything else here? I don't think so. What you drinking? Uh, vodka. I'm drinking vodka, my comrade. Yes. What else am I supposed to drink? Huh? Huh? Um, all right, so and in here, um, actually, what are you thinking? Okay, um, so where is the other file? So I have to go back to hello world. Quas. Imagine drinking kvass like in, in the middle of winter. It's just holy fuck. Why? Why would you do that? All right. So uh, SRC, is it main? Yes, it is main. And I'm going to remove all of that shite. And then I'm going to remove all of that shite. And I'm going to do with hello world CB, uh, right? So hello world CB. And I guess here we'll have to do HW. CB. Oh, I finally understood what HW means. It means hello world. Holy shit. <clears throat> it took me too much time to realize what HW means. Why didn't you just call it hello world then? 
Uh, <clears throat> I even choked to realize what HW means. Like, I, for some reason, my brain was trying to parse it as hardware and was thinking, why, what does hardware even have to, anything to do with all of that? I guess I'm being like an absolute fucking prepared. As usual, though, as usual. So, okay, let's do GPR build and see if it's gonna build. First try. How about that? I just first try this shit. Isn't that amazing? I think it's goddamn amazing. So let me actually prepare uh, and uh, we're gonna try to run it. And we're gonna do uh, curl uh, localhost 8080. And we got hello world. How about that? So yeah. And we will be able to use hello world for 60 seconds. I might as well actually try to do something like this. I wonder if I can do. Yeah, there we go. Here's the here's the hello world. Here's our first hello world in Ada. Isn't that goddamn fucking amazing? Let's celebrate and drink some tea. All right. So, um, is that everything you can do with Ada? Um, can we have like a reference guide for AWS and just see what we can do with it? Does it have any client support and stuff, or is it only server shit? It feels like it's only server shit, so, um, yeah, because it's in the name. Uh, it's only in the name, so doc. Okay, it does have docs, which is nice. You can build them yourself. Um, but maybe there, there are similar docs in here. Uh, for example, they call this GPR build docs on the official adacore.com website. What if I go and replace this to AWS docs, will it give me AWS? Yeah, access denied. Thank you very much. Okay, so apparently there is no like official docs for AWS and um, that's very interesting, so. Uh, documentation, okay, document, AWS, homepage, sources, printable documentation. This is where we have to go community it redirected to some sort of community what the fuck all of the links here are dead it's all dead how am i supposed to use any of this shit holy fuck this is so sad uh all right we can take a look at the source code then so there is the core Here's the core. AWS client. Oh shit. I can actually do queries and stuff. That's amazing. Uh, I can write like APIs and stuff. I like that. I can get URLs. Nice. Okay. So maybe this is what we need to try to do. So AWS client. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so let's try to do that instead. Um, do we need to have like SSL support or something? SSL support. I want to try the client. Uh, apparently Clank can borrow GCC frontends. Uh, okay, cool. Okay, I'm going to make another cup of tea and uh, we can try to explore the capabilities of AWS client, right? So what the client can do. And if it works like curl, it's actually pretty pogue and it could be one of the components of the bot, for example. But to, to have like a Twitch bot, we probably need some IRC support. Is there any either IRC library or something like that? Is it even possible to have something like that? There's Ada ARC, okay. Uh, an Ada library for creating IRC bots. Hmm. Okay. Uh, oh. <laughs> Oh, well, um, okay, that's very interesting, uh, that's very interesting, so they don't even use, G well, they do use GPR, so maybe we can look into that, so this could be uh, examples, uh, there are different commands, and maybe, to be fair, like, IRC protocol didn't really, uh, didn't really change that much for, like, nine, eight years, so maybe it's not that big of a deal, I mean, yeah. I guess plus ada is a secure language so i'm pretty sure what was written like nine years ago uh is still super secure these days 
right because like uh, ada has a very strong like static typing with contracts and shit like that so i'm pretty sure this library is super secure and doesn't need any security updates right so it's not like d right where you can you know do file path injects in the in the time library right it's just it's ada it's used in military uh, in u.s military right? something like that in u.s military would be unacceptable um so yeah I'm sorry, because it was I'm just joking. Did, did they uh, did they fix it already? Um... <laughs> Carrot, are you, why why are you talking to yourself? Are you are you okay? Or is is just a reminder for yourself to to check it out later? Oh, they didn't. Nice. Does anyone have any questions? I'm, I'm making a cup of tea. I, I'm just making a cup of tea. So uh, until I'm done with my cup of tea, uh, I'm not gonna do anything. <sighs> it's a little bit cold in here. I kind of want to put on some socks. So let's make a small break chat. Let's make a small break. Uh, it's gonna be like a two minutes break and after two minutes break We're gonna try to explore the client side of things and Yeah, then we will try to come up with something interesting to do Programming socks. I don't have a programming socks. I'm sorry uh, All right, but maybe I should buy ones um... Oh, by the way, um, I try to install uh, Ada support for Emacs it's actually it actually sucks it doesn't work uh, here's the ADA mode you can try to install it and it actually crashes I think but maybe it's gonna work on this particular machine packages to install one ADA maybe it's gonna work actually but it didn't work on my other account mm. okay so it's doing things hmm I try to install ADA mode on my Emacs right after that stream and it didn't work maybe they fixed it maybe there was something broken there and at some point they fixed something like I don't know like what happened but now it works and if it works now I'm super happy because I can't, don't want to use Vim anymore I'm sorry <laughs> I'm kind of tired of using it um, so let's go so what is AWS and I can go to SRC and if I go here, and it doesn't work. Well, look at that. It says that it's an ADA mode. It's a fucking ADA mode, and none of the keywords are fucking highlighted. Nice ADA mode, by the way. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> what the fuck is this? Are you serious? Uh, excuse me. Um, <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> Can you Vim, uh, do that? Uh, uh, does it support comments? Well, okay. Um... <laughs> There is this philosophy of, of some people. Uh, some people use a very minimalistic uh, like highlighting where the only highlighting they have is the highlighting of string literals and comments and everything else is unhighlighted because they believe this is the most important thing that you need to differentiate from. Maybe it's one of those modes. I have no idea. Maybe that's what it is. Uh, so, but yeah. It is kill build run uh, okay uh, very cool uh, thank you can you rim do that I don't think it can okay small break uh, is gonna be two minutes I think hopefully hopefully it's gonna be around two minutes all right it's gonna be around two minutes and let's do suvun uh, and you guys have uh, fun
Yo, what's up, Epic? Aiders? Is that how you, you call uh, Ada developers? I don't know. Uh, but this shit sucks, by the way. Um, so yeah, uh, maybe I need to restart this entire thing. So it's gonna be SRC main ADB. And let's see, let's see. No! Oh, by the way, it, it was actually saying something down below. Oh, one more time. File mode specification error. Okay, it's broken. It's essentially broken. Uh, Gail Law is continuing the gift sub they got from the anonymous user. I have no idea what that means, but thank you so much for making something that makes this notification pop up because it makes me feel good. Thank you. Uh, all right. That's actually super cool. That's very, very pog. Uh, so I'm going to use Vim, but I really hate this uh, highlighting theme. I think it's dumb. Uh, and this is primarily inf influenced by by the terminal that I'm using. So what about if I use uh, the GVM? GVM has this uh, syntax uh, like a theme that is actually more pleasant and I really like it. It's like a desert theme uh, and I think it's pretty cool. So what, what, do you guys, what do you guys think? Uh, unfortunately, I cannot zoom in and zoom out, uh, zoom out in this particular editor, but I think this particular size of code is okay. Vim huge X, yes, it's one of those things. It's a huge X. I don't remember in which distro it's huge X or something. I, it's like really strange naming, but anyway. Uh, cool. A cool, a cool. Um, that's a lot of garbage, holy fuck. Uh, let me do a git init uh, and uh, let's take a look at the status. So uh, yeah, if I add everything, I can probably even do something like this. Git ignore uh, and I'm gonna include the main. Um, oh, by the way, when I do that, oh, it automatically detaches from the terminal. GVim is so cool. By the way, can I actually mention how GVim is so underrated in... Um, uh, in Linux community. So usually uh, GVim is used on Windows, right? So when Vimers use Windows, they usually use GVim, but Linuxers like don't really use G like GVim that often. It's kind of strange, but it's so good because it detaches you from the terminal, right? So you don't have to deal with escape codes like of terminal or anything like that. Everything works like super fast. And yeah, it's just such a nice editor. I don't know, like I really like it. I like it better than Vim. And maybe this is because I'm Emaxer, right? Emaxer is like used to like GUI editors. Uh, because I like having the same experience as console. Okay, fair enough. Sounds reasonable. It's because it cannot go over SSH properly. Oh, okay. Another interesting thing. Uh, same hotkeys, etc. Isn't the point of using raw Vim is to be in terminal? Okay, I, I see. I see your point. I see your point. Like the the reason why I don't understand those points is because I'm Emacsers and Emacsers used to using GUI editors. So for for us, the, we we kind of you know separated ourselves from these concerns, right? So um, yeah. Okay, th th this explains everything. I'm just you know I just have an Emacs brain. Um, GVim doesn't work with X11 forwarding. It should be actually working with it. Mm. In Emacs, you have a terminal and editor, not editor in the terminal. Yeah, it's actually true. So uh, if you start Emacs, right? If you start Emacs, you can start the terminal, and there you go. Here is your terminal, so you can you can use it. You can start Vim inside of it, and it even works. How about that? Isn't that amazing? I think it's goddamn fucking amazing, mate. Uh, what I love about Vim is the instant start item. You mean something like this? Uh, pretty much the same time. Uh, all right. Oh, fuck. I, I use the wrong editor. So what I want you to do here is I want you to explore the client thingy. I want you to explore the client thingy. Here at some plus, what is the weather service you use for your bot? What is the weather service? It's like WTTR something. I keep forgetting it, actually. Um, <clears throat> by the way, my, my, my kid was ready. I'm going to quickly go to the kitchen and just pour some hot water and I'm going to get back. WTTR and you put CD there. Okay, I'm, I'm going to use this thing for testing the uh, AWS client. So this is what we're going to use. Okay, I'm going to quickly pour the, uh, the hot water and come back. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for mentioning this.
fucking coming. What's up? Uh, oh, format 4. Yeah, it also has to be in a very specific format because it also output a bunch of bullshit that you may not want. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, all right, I think we also need to update. He came finally. <laughs> uh yes we need to update the title um considering considering writing uh, writing a boat in other yes so this is what we're gonna have here <sighs> twitch how hard it is to just not hide this button down there does anyone even care about this page anymore like how difficult it like it doesn't even have a scroll okay it does have a scroll but then if you scroll down to the to the complete bottom it's still not visible <sighs> like in this problem like exists for such a long time holy shit and it's almost like nobody gives a shit about this problem uh you know what because of this problem i'm gonna run a 30 seconds ad there we go that's what you get <laughs> I need the compensation for for my for, for my struggles. I'm, I'm just joking. It was a joke. Uh, right. Ad blocker gang, yeah. Maybe a better project for the LWS if you're writing this uh, dashboard. Uh, how would you revise that, that that dashboard? You mean something like that will interact with Twitch over uh, Twitch API and stuff like that? Uh, yeah. Punish the viewers. Yeah, this is how we roll. Um, okay, so what I want to do is maybe create another file uh, where we're going to have something like client WTTR uh, ATB. The fuck? Uh, okay, and also I can do something like this. I can actually split things uh, and then uh, just have this on my other side. So this is going to be with add a text io use Ada, Ada. By the way, how do you pronounce it correctly? Is it Ada or Ada? Is it data or data? <laughs> uh, so, how do you usually pronounce it? Uh, is this the Ada app OMG that helps with the medical diagnosis? Yes. No, it's actually not. All right, so we're gonna have a procedure and it's gonna be WTTR and is a begin and end. There we go. Like Ada. Let's see. But why not other? Why not other? You pronounce it like other, not other. I see. Thank you so much. Um, all right, so what we need to do here is, I suppose, we need to do AWS uh, client. So we're importing the clients. So once you imported the client, something, something strange going on with my neighbors. Uh, hello, stream loves. Welcome to the stream. Uh, Excuse me. Uh, so here's the AWS client, and um, here we need to do get. All right. And the only thing we need to do here is essentially provide the URL, right? We need to provide the URL. Uh, AWS client get, and URL is going to be HTTPS. Uh, it's actually just a regular HTTP, right? Uh, not HTTPS, WTTR. Uh, so let me find this thing. All right. So, and uh, let's actually copy paste this entire link here. So, because you can always customize it slightly uh, uh, later, right? Uh, what the fuck is going on? Okay. Ah, I see. Yeah. Cool. So, and I think that should be it. And I wonder what's going to happen, right? I wonder what's going to happen. Oh, by the way, this is a completely separate file, right? Since it's a completely separate file, we'll have to uh, create another GPR file for it. So here we have a GPR file for just the prop for, for the server. I would like to rename this thing to a server GPR, right? So now it is a server. 
uh, and I'm gonna open the server GPR. Uh, so here we have server, uh -huh, server, cool. And I'm gonna create another one, it's gonna be uh, WTTR GPR, or maybe I'm gonna actually do it here, uh, WTTR GPR, uh, with AWS, right, with AWS uh, project, uh, WTTR is this thing, uh, for the source directories, we're going to use uh, SRC. It's actually a pretty straightforward build tool. Uh, for languages, we're going to use Ada. Nada. Uh, and uh, for the main, we're going to use WATTR. Okay, so the reason why I want to have these separate files is because now if I want to build uh, WTTR specifically uh, the only thing I have to do is GPR build P uh, WTTR and it's gonna build specifically on WTTR but not gonna touch the server which is kind of cool uh, no candidate inter uh, interpretation match the actual missing argument for parameter connection in call to get okay so apparently you also have to provide the connection so we cannot just take the URL you have to do a connection uh, right, so let's actually take a look. So what is the connection? Uh, and I didn't see the connection. Huh. Like, I literally don't see it. It's just not, not there. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Retrieve the message data dream specified URL with the server and ask for response. Um, okay. Missing parameter, uh, missing argument for parameter connection in call to get. Maybe I'm looking at a very old, maybe I have a very old uh, AWS and they can uh, completely remove the connection at some point. Um, but yeah, let's take, let's take a look. Connection. Uh, HTTP connection. So this is just separate types and stuff like that. You can create a connection. But get doesn't have a connection. Is it some sort of a generic thing? It's not even generic. So there's a connection error. Um, yeah, it feels like a different version. Okay, so maybe we can find um, we can find this thing somewhere here. I wonder where we can find the uh, AWS and AWD files. You know the uh, the A ADS and ADB files. That's what I meant. Right, so the signature and the body files. So because maybe we can just look into them and um, learn about them. To be fair, how do you do uh, this thing? Uh, Outline, what's up, Outline? Uh, lib AWS 18 def. Oh yeah, this is how we do that. So we actually do that in the share. Yeah, it's a user share and you look for ADA and ADA include. Okay, that makes sense. This is actually pretty cool. So we go into the user share ADA. Uh, ADA and ADA include. And the ADA include we have AWS. We have AWS. And uh, we probably have all of this stuff. Uh, like we uh, have a client. And where is the client? Uh, AWS client, here it is. Nice. So I can now try to open AWS uh, client, A uh, ADS, and uh, function get. Here's the function get. So in our particular case, there is less uh, parameters here. There's URL, but I still don't see any connection. And that's the problem still no connection and have no idea what they're talking about we can try to do something like connection and just look for it but overall i just didn't see it mm. let me take a look at the, at the problem one more time but at least i know where uh where it can no missing argument for declared at awks it is 433 huh 433. Oh shit! Oh shit! It's overloaded! Yes, it's Amazon Web Services. Holy fuck! So there is a function get and there is a procedure get. 
Okay. Can your C++ do that? Can your C++ do that? Because it's literally overloading based on the return type or the lack of one. Isn't that fucking amazing? So basically, if you don't handle the return of a function, it's going to be resolved into a procedure. If you handle it somehow, it's going to be resolved into a function. Can your C++ do that? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, I didn't think so. Well, I mean, to be fair, like, a lot of languages are kind of losing to Ada. Um, to be fair, the, the only thing that Ada is lacking in terms of, like, security and the richness of the type system is Borrow Shaker, by, but by itself that is a very controversial feature anyway. So, I don't know. Big brain shit, but pretty unusable. Cool. Uh... All right, so essentially to force it to use the function version, we have to do something with the result of it. That's very pog. That's very pog. And I got a drop of the tea on my glasses. <laughs> Just a second. Just a very small one. Um, uh, Yetanasov, hello, hello. No TSMR. No you. Okay, so can I do something like uh, this? Uh, this is not what I wanted. I wanted something like this. There we go. I can't do that. Uh, so, I want to take a look at the function get. Uh, function get and what does it return? It returns response data. So, uh, let's do something like this. Response. Response. Uh, it's going to be AWS, AWS client. Um, is it really client? Or maybe it's a response data. Where does it take response data? Response. Um, it's like I did in here. So first thing we have to do, we have to do a with AWS response. Here's the response. Uh, and we'll have to do response uh, data. We're doing uh, B boomer stuff today, kind of, I guess, because uh, Ada is a very B, -bo uh, B boomer uh, language. Not gonna lie. Uh, all right, so then we can do a response, and we're gonna assign this thing here. I'm not even sure if we have to do this uh, like a Waller separator, but we'll see. The compiler will tell us anyway if we're doing something wrong. Um, all right, so let's try to build all that, and it builds. I was right. It was overloading the procedure slash function bytes return type or the lack of return type so that's actually pretty poke not gonna lie um okay so if i try to run this thing uh i suppose it will and this is not what i want to run i want to run uh, wttr uh, okay so it performed something it probably made the uh request but we don't know the response because we don't print that response anywhere Oh yeah, so the, the reason why we don't use Ada mode is because it just doesn't work on Emacs. Uh, we managed to install one, uh, but it has a pretty interesting highlighting, uh, WTTR ADB. So um, this is how it looks like. This is the whole highlighting that we can get with the Ada mode. Isn't that Pog? I think it's pretty Pog. Uh. Hello, Heater Scar, welcome. No colors, yeah. So that's why I'm using Vim, specifically GVim, because I'm kind of got sick of the Vim theme in my terminal. I really like the desert theme of Vim, in GVim specifically. I think it's kind of cool. Uh, all right, so can I have something like AWS response? Uh, just take a look at the responses. Uh, it's not res resources, response. Uh, ADS, yeah, I need only S. Uh, and I'm looking for data. I'm looking for data. Type data is private. Okay, so that's actually pretty cool, right? You, it's uh, completely opaque, right? So we get the data, but we cannot look inside of that type. We don't know its size. We don't know anything. Okay, fair enough. So but that means that there should be functions that can extract information out of data. So uh, is there something that can get the content? Uh, content length type. 
build. I think it's called body. I'm pretty sure it's called body. Uh, function build message body post. Uh, so it's primarily like building things, but I don't see how can I get a body and there is like no really way to get the body. Okay, content length, content type, status code. Okay, so here they are. Uh, so you provide the data and you can extract the status code and it will give you messages status code and what is messages and I suppose this is like yet another yet another module so it's gonna be with um, yeah there we go so here's the messages we can actually split everything in here um, SP and I'm gonna open messages ADS uh, and specifically what we're looking here uh, it's gonna be status status code so this is the function I'm looking for uh, it has to be function status code there we go uh, and it returns the status code the type so status code uh, hello apparently potatoes welcome to the stream oh that's pretty cool so this is enumeration look at that so status code is just enumeration of different things so it's not just a number Oh, this, this is such a cool idea. Yeah, by the way, why nobody makes status code and HTTP libraries and enumeration instead of fucking integer? Because there is like a limited amount of codes you can have here. You do. Okay, I'm, I'm super happy that you do that. You're doing the right thing. But to be fair, will it make it difficult to extend it in the future if more codes will be added? Mm, but yeah, but a lot of libraries, uh, a lot of libraries um, actually don't do that. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I wonder if I can then take an image of this thing and convert it to... Um... Oh shit, this is so cool! Look at that! You can define enumeration and for then you can define subtypes of enumeration so you see inf informational is a subtype of status code and it's a range of a status code and it's a new separate type that is subtype without any op bullshit by the way you can define enumeration type and then subtype of enumeration it's this is not a op this is not inheritance it's just taking a set and taking a subset of a set and this is a new new type the fuck Holy shit, this is so cool. <laughs> ah, the fuck? Why is this so reasonable? I mean, the syntax is shit, but the, the idea is like the things uh, behind, like semantical things are so fucking reasonable. It's like, yeah. Um, content encoding is... All right, I'm, I'm super happy with this shit. All right, so what we can do here is uh, we take the response, right? Uh, let's actually capitalize that because it's ADA. Um, response. And uh, we want to take a status code, right? Status code uh, for the response. There we go. Uh, and uh, we can always take an image of the uh, status code, right? So we can also do something like image uh oh yeah this one is actually kind of yeah because this comes from aws response response status code and this comes from aws um messages so we have to do something like aws messages uh -huh. and i really like how i don't even need to read documentation for this library I can just look at the signature files. So ADS stands for ADA signatures files. It's like headers or interface files in OCaml. Uh, and everything is clear so far, right? So this is how uh, I get the status code and I can try to, try to print. So let's see what we're gonna get. So I need to put a line, um, response status code. Uh, and I think this is how you concatenate things. This is how you concatenate things. And let me actually go somewhere here. And let's try to recompile this into a thing and see if it's gonna do things. Um, compiles. And if I try to run it, response status code 200. It just worked. So it, it, it's like, 
<laughs> Who said that I'm gonna have a huge pain in the ass? Like, I don't really have that much pain in the ass so far. I'm not even reading documentation. I'm just looking at the source code, all the signature, and everything just makes sense. It's like, you know, pieces just fit together. It's just a description of how pieces fit together. And I don't even know Ada that much. Um, so why, why do I like this language? Like, what the fuck is wrong with me? What the fuck is wrong with this language? I don't know. Okay, so we can have a message body now. We can try to ext extract the message body and it's actually super straightforward. Um, so uh, AWS, uh, AWS response uh, message body. There we go. So here's a message body and I just use the response. Uh, and let's just print it. Um, response body. Uh huh. And nearly as good as PHP. You're goddamn right. You're goddamn right. Okay. So let's try to rebuild this entire thing. Alrighty. 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 Uh, to, 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 message body. <laughs> message body. Uh, all right. So let's continue. Cool. It worked. We just make, made an HTTP request uh, using Ada and it just works. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? I think it's good and fucking amazing, mate. Um, uh, results. Did they say the results? Uh, probably. Okay. Does this support an HTTPS interface? Can I do this over HTTPS? Okay, I can do that over HTTPS. So this is cool. Uh, so, does AWS supports uh, HTTPS? We're about to find out. Mm -hmm. It supports HTTPS. So, we can already interact with different APIs and do different interesting things. Um, we can already interact with GitHub API, with Twitch API, uh, and yeah, pr probably with Discord API as well. So SSL 3.0, um, imagine not supporting HTTPS. We are talking about a boomer language, so <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if uh, to have like HTTPS support, you would have to do some weird stuff. So yeah. Okay, so we can interact with things. Now, uh, can we have IRC support, right? So, uh, so we already know that there is a library called Ada A I R C. Here it is. But the question is, oh my God, look at that! Oh my God, uh, I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel. Nobody uses this shit. Who's Eric? This is the hero. This is like a real hero, who's like I mean, put out the uh, the only Ada I R C library out there. And it's kind of abandoned, but I mean, I don't blame, uh, don't blame him because you know it's just it's nobody uses this language. It's a nine years old library. Yeah, um, I wonder if it's available on uh, Debian. So Ada IRC. He's using Python nowadays, but Python is not secure enough. What the fuck is he doing? Stop! Stop! Stop using Python. It's not secure. All right. So uh, let's actually try to build this thing. Um, so to build, you can build all to create a release build, uh, build debug to, to make the tests and examples. So there's a bunch of examples. Uh, it's kind of interesting. So these examples don't have a G... He has... Oh, he doesn't have binaries. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, here's a GPR. Uh -huh. So build, so there are different build types and source dir is that, uh, object dir is, oh, okay, so you can actually specify object dir and it's going to put all the garbage there. Oh shit, I need that. <laughs> Wait a second, I'm, I'm going to quickly just add that to my, to, to my files as well, GPR. Uh, for object, what was that, uh, object dir. Uh, use build. 
So, and if I try to do GPR uh, build, is it gonna uh, discriminant, discriminant check failed, raised constraint error. What the hell are you talking about, bro? Ah, because I specified array, I suppose, I think it looks like an array, but expected a single value. So there's, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Uh, object data build not found. Oh, it has to exist. Why can't you just create it then? Well, I mean, maybe it does make sense. Uh, all right, so if I go to the build, it put all the garbage there. Oh my god, I want to hug you. I want to hug you anyway. Um, so cool. So this is how you can get rid of all of that. That's that's super cool. Creating is not secure. Well, technically, yes. Technically, yes. And yeah, I'm telling you, Eric is a real hero. Okay, so he not only put out the library <clears throat> for, a, for a very obscure language, uh, he also educating us, right? So we're actually learning from his project. Isn't that amazing? Um, why am I so excited about this language? It's not even that special. Uh, but there's something, there's something about this language, like, it's just, I don't know. Maybe I'm just, maybe this is because I'm a boomer. Yeah, that's probably why. So, a boomer found a boomer language and, uh, yeah, it's just, that's what, what's going on here. Anyway, um, <clears throat> let me, let me see. So, can we now try to build this entire thing? Uh, so, I'm gonna clone that. And this is going to be the real testimony of this programming language. Seriously. Uh, remember the Elm example? Remember the Elm example that does not compile after two years? So we have a two years program in Elm and you can just throw it away. You can just throw it away, essentially. So we have a nine year old library in Ada. Does it still compile in 2021? We're about to find out. All right, so what do they say in the in the instructions? So you just have to build all. Okay, uh, build all. Impress me. Fucking impress me. Okay, I'm impressed. It builds. <laughs> the fuck? And it builds so fucking fast. Okay, so is it is it even real? Is it even working? Is it like maybe it's not finished or something? Um, the fuck? So... Pure IRC. Maybe maybe there's nothing there. Who knows? Uh, there's also IRC bot. The fuck. Okay. So you can also do like make tests to build some tests. Um, okay. It builds a bunch of bots. And where does it put them? I suppose it puts them into the build folder. And here they are. But where are the executables? Okay, so there's a bunch of like O files in here, and I'm not really sure how to use all of that, but... Uh, okay, so there's also lib. Uh -huh, so here they are. RC, blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And uh, examples, if we take a look at the examples, we have bin files. And here are the executables for the bots. And all of that fucking compiles. Nine year old source code. Holy shit. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Okay, so can we do Pongbot? Pogbot. Uh, okay, host name not found irc tendbit.net. Can we hack one of these things to actually, you know, uh, connect to Twitch or something? Can your Rust do that? Well, I, I heard how Rust is stable this, these days, maybe. Um, okay, Grim Pogbot. Let's take a look at Pogbot. Uh, so it does on message ping. Uh, normally you, oh, they even have comments. This bot simply connects to an RC server and sticks around without doing much of anything. Most simplistic example. Um, okay. So you create a bot, they even, oh my god, he even provided like a special function to create a bot. Not a client, but bot. Um, Alright. 
Normally, you would use a RC command install to add the standard command set, blah, blah, blah. The socket to identify the bot, uh, okay. Loop until program is killed or an error occurs, and you have like exceptions and stuff, like okay, a parse error, blah, blah, blah. Close the socket. Pretty straightforward, I cannot complain, okay. So, uh, unbounded strings, makes sense, IRC message, you read the line, okay, bot reads the line, then you parse the IRC message, and then you uh, process this message, I suppose, print out the message so we can get some feedback. Um, all right, uh, that's pretty pog. Uh, maybe we can connect to free node or something, that would be actually interesting. I'm gonna create a language like Rust and call it stainless, that's very funny. Now we have a small question, how hard would uh, hole punching be with TCP? Very hard. Uh, okay, so let's uh, go. Uh, I'm gonna go to the boat uh, and just create another one that connects to something else. Connect to free node. He said very funny, Pog, yes. Mr. Streamer acknowledged your funny joke. Ha ha! Ha ha! All right. So, uh, what we're gonna connect to? What we're gonna connect to? Chatfreenode.net. Um, port for plain text uh, 6697 six, six, for TLS encrypted connection. Okay, so let's actually try a TLS encrypted connection. It's gonna be 6697 Nick. Pong bot. Here's the Pong bot. Uh, cool. Uh, let's try to rebuild this entire stuff. We're gonna rebuild all, uh, just in case, and I'm gonna rebuild the test. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's rebuilding Pong bot. We're gonna go to the example bin. Not bu, bu. Uh -huh. Pong bot. Uh, connection reset by peer. Okay, so it feels like it couldn't do the uh, TLS connection. Mm -hmm. That's what it feels like. But if we try a plain text one, um, okay, uh, six six. What about plain text one? Six six. So this one is going to be just six. Uh, can I have make here? I don't think I have makes in here. Yeah, make has to be like from here. There we go. Hmm. Example, uh, an option on the library, yeah, probably, uh, we'll figure it out uh, at some point, Pong bot, okay, it works. Uh, so on the, on, the, on the plain text it does work, uh, which is reasonable, so this is, um, ah, whatever, I'm not gonna even comment anything, we can do something like this, original, uh, TLS uh, plain text. There we go. Uh, so let's go back. So TLS um, 32. Pong bot um, make test. <laughs> and it resets. Okay, so what kind of option could it be? In the bot we can take a look at the bot create so let's go where so it's uh, a the examples it could be src fourth uh, you wrote plan oh god damn thank you so much and the compiler wouldn't even tell me that because it's a comment thank you so much for you actually caught a problem that couldn't be caught by a compiler thank you thank you thank you by the way hello for welcome to our stream how do you like ada so far isn't that a cool language Look how Pascalish it is. Look how boomer it is. <laughs> and me boom, being boomer myself, I actually like just enjoy it. Uh, does the TLS require certificate? Certificate? Probably. We're about to find out. We're about to find out. Uh, all right. Okay. So what do we have? I need to uh, separate this shit. Uh, compiler not worrying about spelling issues in comments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, by the way, I think IntelliJ IDEA has a pretty cool feature where it uh, checks the spelling in the names of classes and functions and variables. <laughs> so essentially, uh, it parses your name, it recognizes whether it's a camel case or snake case, splits it by words, and then checks the spelling within those words. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> I think it's actually pretty cool. This is such a cool idea, in my opinion. 
Um, yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, let's actually go to the library and uh, let's take a look at the parameters that you have in our IRC bot create. Uh, IRC bot uh, as uh, create. I think it's a, it's a function. I think it's a procedure. Procedure create. Uh, we don't have a procedure create, but do we have just create? Oh, it's a function because it returns a connection. Okay. So, so far, uh, yeah, it accepts only a server, uh, socket port, um, and a nick, and it doesn't accept anything else, unfortunately. Doesn't accept anything else unless, yeah, so the thing here is that RC bot library is probably built on top of uh, a proper IRC library and maybe it has to be done uh, in a more low level, right? Because you can create connection, right? You can create some sort of a connection. Uh, right, so yeah, here's the connection and then you use this connection to do things. Uh -huh. So uh, is there any other way to create a connection? Return connection. Okay, this is the only function that returns a connection. Okay, so so far we don't have any opportunity to use TLS unless we create connection that uses TLS. Write your own RC library. Eh, I would rather extend this library because this library looks nice. Um, I actually like it so far. Um, so I would try to find ways to extend it. I wonder how, how uh, active Eric is on the internet these days. Maybe... Does he develop anything? Oh yeah, he's, he's pretty reactive. So maybe he will react to our pull request if we ever submit one. Um, so, and there's no like issues. There's no pull request. Like literally nobody is using it. Uh, was there another bot example? Maybe we'll, we'll take a look at it. It was like a host bot, but I don't think it's using TLS either. Uh, okay, nobody ever submitted a single issue to this project. Nobody ever submitted a single pull request to this issue to, to this project. Okay, we're about to be the first ones. <laughs> that project. It's not really a dead project. It's rather dead language. So uh, it's like it's language that is used only by U.S. militaries, and U.S. militaries don't use IRC. I'm pretty sure they don't. <laughs> um, time to submit the first issue. Rewrite it in Rust. Yeah. Rewrite it in Rust. Rewrite it in Rust. Rewrite it in Rust. Too, too many syllables, but it kind of works. Rewrite it in Rust. Mm, all right. Uh, what I was thinking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's actually close all the shit. Uh, and uh, let's take a look at other examples here. So there was a host bot. Uh, and I don't think host bot is anything special. Right, all of them is, are probably using like create bot that, yeah, it's just... Uh, it does use 6667, so... Okay, so let's go to the SRC. Um, and here is IRC library itself. Here's the IRC library itself. Uh, so there's the messages, commands. Uh, maybe I'm going to take a look at the IRC bot ADB. And how do you create this thing? All right, so uh, we use GNAT sockets. We use GNAT sockets to connect to things. All right. Uh, and then we have a C connection, and I suppose C connection is just like it's a custom type. Uh -huh. So it just creates the connection type, nothing special. Uh, and when we uh, connect, when we connect, if it's connected, uh, you create a socket, connect a socket, and you mark the connection being connected. And uh, how do we? We don't even return it because connection is in out. All right. Looks good so far. So it's all boils down to maybe passing some special parameters to GNAT uh, sockets. So we need to understand how GNAT sockets work and whether you can do TLS with them. You see what I mean? Uh, you see what I mean? And if we manage to do that, maybe it's going to be a lucky winner or something. I don't know. Um, 
Looks good to me so far. Um, I want to take a look at the Pog bot one more time. Um, wait a second. Wait a fucking second. Wait a fucking second. Um, where am I? So I'm in examples, then SRC. I need SRC though. Ah, okay. SRC, IRC, bot, ADB. Um, connect is a function with a single argument, but I call it as a method of bot. Is that a new reference? Is that like a universal function call syntax thingy, whatever the fuck it is? Is that... I think it's not gonna generally work. Um, right, so I think it's not gonna generally work, work because you need to have something like tagged type or whatever. Um, so if we go to the examples RC bot um it's not examples it's src rc bot ads and we take a look at the connection type yeah it's tagged private i think it's only it only works on the tagged types uh ada tagged types what's so special about tagged types uh type extension or ada uh, amendment attack types provide support for dynamic polymorphism and type extension a tag type bears a hidden tag that identifies the type at runtime. Apart from the tag, a tag uh, record is like any record, so it can contain arbitrary data. So it's, ba it's basically needed for the, for the polymorphism, I see. Gnet reference manual doesn't even mention TLS nor SSL. Nice. Epic. I'm so fucking happy. happy. <laughs> You're already looking into that, old man, right? So it's going to be fun. Um... Uh, Ada, Gnet, TLS, SSL. Mm, building AWS. Uh, well, I mean, to be fair, AWS can do TLS or SSL or whatever the fuck it is. Okay, so I know the one thing replaced another. Doesn't fucking matter. You know what I'm talking about. Um, so maybe we can steal some of this stuff from AWS. Right. So maybe we can steal some stuff from there. Um, so if we like look into AWS, I think in the source code, does it have a mentioning of TLS? So it has a core. So uh, TLS, SSL. Okay, so there's uh, SSL, IDS, AWS Net. So it does know how to do some things. So it's SSL thin. SSL thin, huh? So and maybe it uses like third-party dependencies and whatnot. Zero X C three three zero one is gifting five tier subs. Thank you so much for uh, supporting the the channel and C four des zs Jinsk W Jul X Y Z Smertos and Wobby. Welcome to our epic Ada Club. How about that, bitch? Oh, wait a second. The SSL. I see SSL. SSL detected. Yes. Epic. Let's look into that. So AWS can do SSL. Um, and what this thing does? Cryptolib. Ha! Huh. SSL detected. Uh, binding. Oh. I see. So essentially, they wrote like a thin wrapper around OpenSSL and they're just using OpenSSL. Okay, I see. Well, I mean, uh, it's a reasonable solution, I guess. I guess it's a reasonable solution. Uh, there's only one children. one children the main developer is russian language for us military interesting 
Um, okay. One children. <laughs> I mean, come on, it probably was written by this dude and he doesn't really speak English that well. I can see myself making the same mistake. Like, you know, plural and singular of children, child is, is hard for people who speak English as a second language, okay? It's because it doesn't follow the rules. Well, why do you have children? Why don't you call it childs? What's wrong with you English speaking people? It's childs. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at this thing. Um, <clears throat> so uh, there's also SSL uh, GPR. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So it does uh, when open SSL static. Ah, and it also goes into the build AWS config. Um, okay, this one is complicated. What about this one? Is it as complicated as anything else? Also, it uses some shared stuff. Mm. Hmm. This is really strange. And how do you use it afterwards? Because the... Ah, and SSL wrappers is an independent package to stop all the SSL thin routines. Uh, so SSL... What was that? I'm muted. SSL wrappers. Okay. And where can we find SSL wrappers? Um, you know what? I'm going to actually clone this entire thing because it's going to be easier for us to, uh, to work with it. AWS. AWS! Uh -huh. It's actually a pretty small project, it doesn't really have that much of the data. We already cloned it. No, no. Uh, so, what if I grab uh, SSL wrappers, SSL poggers? Uh, and we don't really have that. That's really strange. Um, hmm. Okay, let's find everything related to SSL, and that's a lot actually. Uh, that's actually a lot. Uh, so there is uh, some documentation building AWS, using AWS. I don't really care about RST. So all of that is documentation, right? So, oh, holy shit. Can I exclude particular folders out of the grep? Uh, can I exclude, exclude them? Uh, exclude. Exclude. Skip any command line file with the name suffix. Okay. Um, wait, wait. Well, there was actually several excludes. Exclude from and exclude dir. Skip any command line director with the name prefix that matches globe. Okay, so maybe we can do that. Exclude dir. And what the directory that we need to exclude is docs. Okay, grep. Uh huh. So let's actually exclude that. Exclude uh, docs and let's see. And okay, so that that was actually pretty effective. So uh, and it didn't do anything. Um, nice one. <laughs> do I have to do that like here? I see SSL. Um, okay, so let, oh, exclude dear. I'm an yes. I'm an idiot. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm such an idiot. I'm really, really sorry. Oh, what's up, Anabot? Hello. Yes, it works. Naizu, 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 naizu. Um, so cool. Something is actually broken here. Ah, because it doesn't have. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There we go. Uh, AWS client, uh, SSC, AWS net SSL. Aha. Uh -huh. AWS net SSL. Huh. So maybe we can use some of these things here. Maybe we can use some of the things here. AWS net SSL. Aha. Uh -huh. Client is just a client. Set SSL config. Yeah, I think that's what we need. AWS net SSL. 
All right. So if I look, uh, if I go into one of these things, Gvim, AWS Net SSL ADS. So that's the module we probably need. Um, so what is all about? What is all about? This is a library's free software. Uh, this is the SSL-based implementation of the Net package. The implementation should depend only on AWS Net STD and the SSL library. It is important to not call directly the socket bindings here to uh, ease porting. Uh, all right. So what you can do here, um, well, there you go. You, you can connect to, to a socket. So we have a socket type. And a socket type is a private thing, so we don't even know what is a socket type. Uh, connect a socket on a given host port. If wait is true, connect will. Uh, uh -huh. If wait is false, to, to the connection established, and it does not make the SSL handshake. It is possible to wait for the connection completion by calling wait routine with output set to true and uh, in event parameter. There we go. So um, you can have SSL um, or TLS, whatever the fuck you want to call it, sockets. Uh, by utilizing AWS, right? But that will make AWS, uh, AWS, um, that will make uh, um, ADIRC depend on the AWS, which is not particularly a great idea. Which is not particularly a great idea. So um, I kind of want to try that. So there's a different method. So as you can see, SSL, TLS, different versions of TLS. Which one, which TLS is the latest one, by the way? TLS 1.3, I think? Um, this is the latest one. Mm, yeah, I think this one. So Anatomy supports TLS up to 1.2. So I wonder when they're gonna add support for that. Wait, I'm looking at the old version. Actually, if you think about it, I, I this is the version that is on my machine. The one on the GitHub, the one on the GitHub probably um, probably doesn't have any of these problems, right? Uh, where can I find? I need to find the file. Uh, excuse me, I don't uh, go to file. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, AWS net uh ssl ads so and that thing was a method right so that thing was a method holy shit it's so slow type method and it still doesn't put 1.3 nice but at least at least look 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 at least they removed support for ssl version 3. <laughs> At least that, but they didn't add support for TLS 1.3. Like, how many actually, how much software actually supports TLS 1.3 at this point? I think, I don't think that much. I'm probably never gonna get it. Eh, I don't know, depends. So, um, all right, it's pretty cool. What I wanna do, what I wanna do, I wanna write a simple application. Uh, that utilizes this SSL sockets from AWS and connects to um, SSL or TLS um, of free node, right? Just to check that we can actually connect to free node. Uh, once we've done that, once we once that we've done that, we can actually explore how to um, do that, but from within the uh, IRC, uh, IRC, A the IRC. Jiang, by the way, hello. Uh, have you been here? the whole time i don't remember saying hello to you but hello okay this is very interesting i like i'm liking it so far this is very interesting exploration i especially like how i don't have a single plan for today's stream seriously i have no idea what what i'm supposed to do today i'm just like jumping between the libraries just exploring d different things and it's actually kind of cool ignored by zozin did i ignore somebody I'm sorry if I ignored anybody. I didn't do that intentionally. I don't do that intentionally sometimes. <laughs> sorry. Uh, if you want to plan, install plan 9. I want you to try plan 9 at some point. We'll see how it goes. Maybe on, on one of these Friday streams. Uh, got banned for mentioning plan 9. Uh, all right. Oh, by the way, does Go work on plane, uh, Plan 9? 
I think it should. I think it should work in plan nine. Um, okay. <clears throat> so what do we have here? So this is the status thingy. Uh, and I also want to git ignore super fast. So this is IRC bot. Uh, git ignore the build folder. I think it's quite important. So this build folder is going to be ignored. Uh, git status. Um, and we'll have to remove all of these binaries as well. I don't think they fit here. All right. And <clears throat> uh, let's do a committee committee. So do I have a log? I don't even have any committee committee. Okay, so let's actually do a first committee committee. Git ignore, server, GPR, um, SRC, WTTR. Uh, so this is the status. And yeah, this is basically what we have here. Uh, and let's do commit. Um, ready, ready, set, a go. Boom. Do I need to actually like put that on the uh, on the GitHub? Is anyone interested in in this entire thing? I, I can put it on GitHub is it, if anyone is interested. Um, all right. So, but I think I need to put like I need to clean it up a little bit because right now we have two things here. Uh, Git clean of JS, by the way. We have two things. Uh, WTTR client. WTTR client and uh, some sort of a server, uh, like a hello world server. Um, and yeah, so nothing special. Uh, the next thing we're going to add there is going to be the uh, SSL client of some sort. Uh, maybe before I'm going to submit all of that, I'm going to write like a readme. Uh, you know what? First, I'm going to uh, uh, write a license. First, I'm going to write a license and look at the this legitness. Look at that. Boom. And here we go. Here's the lightness, uh, license and it actually shows the correct year. Absolutely fucking amazing. So I'm going to save that and I'm going to close Emacs. Yes, I opened Emacs specifically to do that. <laughs> Shut up. Don't, don't say anything. Yes, um, I know it's dumb. Um, <clears throat> all right. Read me. Um, how, what are we going to put here? Other experiments uh, experiments just a small uh, project let's actually put a small fan fun project to experiment with other uh, programming language uh, language and um, AWS right so and we're gonna leave the links to both of these things uh, to both of these things. So AWS is a framework, is a web framework for ADA. It is not uh, Amazon Web Services or anything like that. Uh, so I know you want to make a funny joke saying that it's actually Amazon Services. No, it is not. But the joke is funny. Thank you very much. I laughed. Okay, and uh, ADA, ADA programming language. Why are you not using Emacs? Because Emacs sucks! Ah! I hate this programming language. It sucks. It sucks. It's bad. I hate it. Uh, yes, that's why. Does this answer satisfy you, by the way? Uh, so is that the official? I think I think that's that's it. All right. So um, cool. Uh, quick start. Mm -hmm. uh, so dependencies. Uh, dependencies. Dependen dependencies. The first dependency is going to be a uh, GPR build. You need GPR build to build these things. You need GPR build to build GPR. Uh, okay, GPR build. So here it is. Uh -huh. And AWS, which is the this thing. Uh -huh. Uh, on Debian, uh, on De Debian, uh, you can install all of the dependent dependencies from the official official uh, repos. Console, hola. Uh, sudo apt install 
GPR build and Leap AWS. I think it's 18 dev, if I'm not mistaken. Let me actually double check that. Search Leap AWS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's 18 dev. Uh, all right, so uh, this is basically the dependencies. So dependencies on, on build, you can install that. Uh, to build, uh, to build the um, examples, do the following thing. It's going to be console, uh, and it's just do GPR build. It's I think it's P, uh, and the first one is going to be server GPR, and the next one is going to be GPR build uh, P. <laughs> Uh, WGTR GPR. So you see for different projects we have different uh, you know files that describe the projects and yeah that's pretty much it. Um, mm -hmm. What is going on? Who are you? Uh, okay I don't know who you are. Ada. Yes it is Ada. Um, do you like this language? Is that a Pog language, as the kids would say these days? Ah, ah, how do you do, fellow Zoomers? All right, so I'm ready to do a committee committee. I think we're ready to do a committee committee. Add a license, uh, release under MIT. Uh, add uh, commit, add, add read me. Cool. Um, so I'm going to move uh, this thing, ADA AWS, ADA probe, like this, ADA probe. Uh, just a small fun project to experiment with uh, ADA. Okay, so are you guys ready to go to the GitHub and upload all of that goodness? <laughs> <laughs> new epic mode. We actually have three new epic modes. The first one is Sodium Pog, uh, and another one is Sodium Smug, and another one is Sodium Re. There you go. Which one do you like? So Ada Probe, and this one is going to be just a small fun project to experiment with Ada. Just a small fun project to experiment with ada and it's gonna be a public there we go mm -hmm. okay so i want to add the remote now git remote add origin and git push origin master How about that uh, and there we go so here it is here is the project so this is where we experiment with ADA. So there's a, a explanation on how to use these uh, things and stuff like that. So maybe it's gonna be useful for somebody. We might as well actually update the project. Uh, so update CMD pro, uh, project uh, doing a small fun project to experiment with ADA source code is this one cool. um, so the first one uh, the most interesting thing is WTTR is just WTTR client uh, and I'm thinking that I wanna you know I wanna uh, clean it up so let me actually open it WTTR ADB uh, to the two, two. right so essentially what we probably want to do here is just to print only the response right there's no reason to print anything else All right we're going to be printing only the response we're going to remove this thing um and i wonder if we can inline all of that maybe it doesn't make to inline all of that uh but that should be okay another thing i want to also to do is to accept this thing the city from the command line Imagine using Master Branch in 2020. Yeah, like it was, I think it was automatically created by my Git. Uh, like I personally don't care. I would be happy to use main. It's just the default for my Git right now is master. Uh, but yeah, maybe if I update Git, it will switch to something, something else. I, I think you can, 
I think you can change the default. Wait a second. Git uh, change default branch. Right. How do you do that? So it's somewhere in the in the git config. Uh, git config. They let you change it now. Who are they? I'm not talking about GitHub. I'm talking about Git. Um, is there a name that you found bunch to master to main? This is not what I'm talking about. Oh, oh my god, people, this is not what I'm talking about. Holy shit. Um, uh, config. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. Uh, an anonymous user is gifting five tier one subs. Thank you. Thank you so much, an anonymous user. And like, uh, I don't know who you are, uh, but thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and everyone who got the sub, uh, Trefis, uh, Gil Christian, uh, to your service, uh, AW Sky, uh, Devorak, welcome to our epic Git branch community. Uh, so, what I wanted to change it to. Uh, and i think i'm okay with main because main is actually super short and i already have reflexes to type main so i don't really want to like i mean like jokes like trunk or bachelor is very fun uh but uh different names was gonna screw up with my reflexes right so uh and i already have reflexes to tape to type main because this is exactly what i do every time i start a c program so i have a pretty strong reflexes to just type main and it's shorter than master so switching from master to main is actually easier for me than switching from master to trunk or anything else so that's why i'm gonna actually stick with uh main uh all right so uh, where it is so this is what i want to do so the next time uh right i'm gonna create a new project is gonna automatically use main hopefully <clears throat> yeah thank you thank you so much for for, for the support all right uh let's continue uh let's continue so here it is and how can i get the command line arguments uh for the for the other program i remember i did that in aoc so let's actually go to aoc 2020 and in here uh we should be able to find something oh my god another sub oh my god there we go Thank you. Uh, Oh, we actually had two subs simultaneously. I didn't even realize that. So there was a Sh Shazo Wax sub and there was a Hedris car. Uh, Shazo, thank you so much for 16 months of Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Beautiful, beautiful song. I really loved it. And Hedris car, thank you so much for tier one subscription. Your first subscription, by the way. Welcome, 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 welcome. All righty. Uh, yep. So many subs today. I don't know. Like, I'm not even doing anything special. Is that the magic of Ada? Should I program more in Ada? I guess so. Uh, people seem seem to like it, okay? So I'm gonna continue programming in Ada. Because it's a pretty cool language, not gonna lie. XUA39, thank you for uh, tier 1 sub. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. Do, do you guys really like Ada? Is, it, is that interesting language? Like, I mean, I, I do like it as well, so yeah. Uh, that makes sense. Thank you, thank you so much for, for, for tier 1 sub. Your first sub, by the way. Welcome to our epic Ada Club. That's right. Uh, alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. It's a nice thumbnail, by the way. Uh, okay, so how do you uh, grab the command line arguments? How do you grab the command line arguments? I remember that you do that. Uh, yeah, there we go. So there is like argument count. Uh, argument count. Um, and 
Then there is the argument function. There's two functions, argument count and argument function. Uh, okay, good. And I think you also need to import something for that. Yeah, this is essentially what you need to import. Essentially what I want to do, I want to accept uh, the name of the city as a command line argument for WTTR client, right? So by itself, this is kind of a, like a useless, uh, kind of useless program, but we're writing it just to like learn how to do, how to program in, uh, in, in Ada. Uh, and that, in my opinion, makes sense. Um, all right. I'm going to move this thing here and let's actually go down a little bit and we need to take a look at the argument count. So we need to accept at least um, one argument count, right? So we need at least one of them. So if argument, argument count is less than one, right, then uh, we have to throw some sort of an error, right? Uh, and if, if I remember correctly, that's how we do that. But I don't remember how to throw an error. Uh, is there something... Ada? Uh, error. Um, crash with error? Or maybe, maybe just error. Error function. So as far as I know, um, yeah, error handling. Uh, Ada supports exceptions, right? So probably the canonical way of failing with an error would be to throw exception, right? And throwing an exception is probably something like a rise. Right, and you can have, yeah, you probably have to define your own exceptions and then fail with them. Uh, okay, so let's actually go ahead and do that. Um, I can do something like uh, not enough arguments, arguments is an exception, right? So this is an exception. And uh, if you have argument count less than one, we rise not enough arguments. Does it make sense? Um, using exceptions that came out. Anna both. you're a JavaScript developer. Oh, to be fair, JavaScript developers these days uh, actually try to avoid exceptions, I think. Yeah, I think uh, they are all encapsulated in like in, in promises and stuff like that. I'm sorry for exposing, I didn't mean to. But I mean, come on, exceptions are everywhere. There's not that many languages where you won't find uh, exceptions, so... Those languages are pretty exceptional. Ah, 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 whatever. <clears throat> anyway. So, uh, yeah. So if we don't have enough arguments, um, let's actually see if it's going to work or not. So we're going to be GPR built. What's your opinion on TypeScript? Mm. I hate it. I fucking hate it. The worst language ever. Is that a good answer? Is that what you wanted to hear? <laughs> C is better than TypeScript. Right, let's move on. It's not like the schedule page is written in TypeScript. Anyway, uh, all right. Mm, build, oh, you have to actually create a build. Oh, holy shit, we found an error. Okay, so, and the problem is that you cannot add the empty folder to the Git. What's your opinion on Ada? I hate it. Worst language ever. Um, <clears throat> okay. You cannot add uh, empty folders to um, to Git. Right. Um, <clears throat> so, and how people usually add empty folders? Yeah, give, yeah you're, you're right. Git, Git. We're going to touch. We're going to touch it gently. Git, Git. And there we go. So now we have this thing here. Uh, and uh, that will enable us with adding this thing here. Uh, cool. Wait a fucking second. Oh shit, I'm an idiot. Yeah, I'm an idiot. I get ignored it. <laughs> okay. Um, so, like, the reason why I get ignored it is because I got used to the fact that the build folder is usually created by the build tools, right? It's kind of unusual when the build tool requires the build folder, but it doesn't create it. So, which makes it kind of difficult to uh, git ignore all of the garbage. 
So essentially, now what I need to git ignore instead, I actually have to git ignore, uh, git ignore everything within the build, but not the build itself. And I think I, I can do it like that, right? So, but that will git ignore git keep as well. But I think it's not that big of an issue because I can add git keep uh, regardless of this being a git ignore, right? I think I think this is how it works. Okay, so this is what we have, and I can always try to add uh, build git keep, right? The following paths are ignored by one of the yeah, and I can actually force that. There we go. Even though it's git ignored, I still can add it. Okay, that makes sense. Oh, you can actually do like a, okay. I didn't know that. Um, let me let me try that. Um, how do I git reset? Can I just reset? Um, yeah. Git status. Yeah. Okay. I, I reset it. Uh, git ignore. Uh, then can I do build? git keep okay git status okay and then if i add it's this perfect thank you thank you everyone who actually like suggested all this stuff this is actually pretty cool uh, mm -hmm. mm. yeah it is used in only, only in military stuff well, I mean, it's also used by some enthusiasts and stuff like that, but the, its primary usage is U.S. military department. So, and it was designed specifically for U.S. military department. Um, also, I think I need to um, git ignore the editor garbage as well. So let's quickly do that. Um, so it's going to be swap its status. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Add git ignore. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, introduce the uh, build folder. And now, if I try to do G gpr build p uh, wttr gpr, uh, is it gonna work? Okay. So when it should generate some garbage in build, but this garbage should be git ignored. Perfect. I'm absolutely happy. So WTTR uh, build WTTR, and if I try to do that, uh, WTTR not enough argument t s should be s in my opinion. Uh, not enough arguments. Cool. But if I provide Novo Novo Sibirsk, okay, it does perform the uh, the the request. I think that's cool. So, uh, how are we going to do all of that? Um, I think I'm going to just do something like this and concatenate this stuff. So, it's going to be uh, argument one, like this, and you can use uh, whatever city you want. So, it's a very simple, uh, very simple client uh, for WTTR that uses AWS. Uh, very, very straightforward and very simple. All right, so uh, GPR, WTTR, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it does not compile because I did the fucky wacky. Mm -hmm. uh, WTTR, ADB, 14, it has to be S. Uh -huh. Cool. Uh -huh. Build this one. And I can provide Nova Sibirsk. Cool. So let's provide other as a, uh, other cities. Uh, Moscow, I think. Unknown location. Moscow is an unknown location. That's very interesting. Is that because it has to be capitalized? Okay. Um, what's funny is that can I have like New York? It's all a known location. Only Novoserbisk is a known. Okay. Uh, all right. So, I want. I'm gonna copy paste it, by the way, because I'm not sure if I'll be able to type it properly. Uh huh. Mm. Maybe. Oh shit. Maybe I have to like um, URL encode it. 
Maybe that's what needs to be done. Uh, classified Moscow location. Amsterdam. All right, so that's very interesting. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, so I'm really confused. Um, so we'll we probably need to do some sort of encoding, right? Um, but it shows GPS location. I have no idea what the fuck is GPS location. What if it is a GPS location? Uh, it probably doesn't have an access to that. Uh, so, um, I want to try to URL encode the input, and this is something that we have to do anyway, right? So, we'll have to URL encode it anyway, so let's see. Uh, but the question is, how can we even find uh, the URL encoding? I can try to do something like this. Uh, grep encode encode. Uh, URL in code. Cool. Okay, here it is. So in AWS parameters, uh, we have URL. Okay, so this AWS URL. I think that's what we need here. Um, what's that? This is uh -huh. mm, This is the bot, and I'm gonna split this thing here. Mm, AWS URL. Oh my god, I URL uh, ADS encode. Uh -huh. So maybe function encode. Oh, there we go. That was actually super easy. Um, <laughs> the fuck? It was easier than I expected. Um, yeah, there's literally a module AWS URL and it has a function encode that accepts a string and returns you a string. Encode string into URL safe form. Many uh, characters are forbidden, blah, blah, blah. So that was actually pretty fucking straightforward. What the fuck? Um, okay, can we do something like this? Uh, I want to define like a URL, uh, which is going to be a string. It's going to be a string. And it's going to be with AWS URL. So I think uh, it's capitalization actually doesn't matter uh, because it's case insensitive. Uh, and then we do encode. And what I want to do here is I want to encode specific... Oh, shit. You have to be super careful because uh, you cannot access the arguments before you check whether you have enough arg arguments, right? So uh, URL is going to be something like this. And here we accept argument, argument one, right? And then here is going to be simply HTTPS WTTR in... Uh, and it's going to be this format for, right? And uh, afterwards, I can uh, just do something like this. Just remove all of that, and I'm using URL. So on top of that, it would be um, nice to log the URL to confirm that we didn't do any significant fucky wacky if you know what I mean. Uh, put line um, requesting, requesting... Uh, URL, right? Uh, and yeah, let's put it like this. Cool. So we're checking that we have enough arguments. We're constructing a new URL. We're encoding the part that is provided by the user, so the user cannot inject any, uh, you know, shenanigans in there. And then we also print this thing, um, and then we request, and then we print the message body. Seems pretty good. Seems pretty good. So GPR build W uh, T T R. Um, mm, 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 mm. Okay, Un uh, unconstrained subtype not allowed, need initialization. Oh shit, that's very interesting. Ah, so it's at 13. So the thing about strings in ADA is actually very interesting, is that they have to be constrained to a particular size all the time. And if you don't initialize them properly, um, so Ada doesn't really know its size. Uh, Ada doesn't know its size. So as far as I know, but what's funny is that you can always defer 
the declaration of the variable until you know the size of the variable, even though if the size is known at runtime. So uh, you can do something like this. You can do declare uh, and put string like that, right? And then you're gonna have the block begin where you're gonna do all of that. So it's basically like a way um, It's, a, it's a basically a way to define uh, variables in any place. Like, you know, in C, you can uh, declare a variable in any place in the body of the function. It's the same in Ada. It's only you have to use a special block declare, which declares this variable for, for this specific block. And I think this will work because if you define a string like that, it has to be initialized. And uh, we cannot initialize it before we check the arguments. So that's why we first check the arguments and only then we define URL and only then it's going to work. Uh, and if we try to compile that, it does in fact compiles. Like, I, I'm always surprised how much sense this language makes. It's just like, the semantic is consistent. That's what enables me with just guessing how to fix things. Because I never read anything about Ada. I never read any book about, about Ada or any documentation. I'm just looking at the semantic, and semantic is pretty much consistent. Uh, which makes it super easy to learn this language, at, at least for me. I, I don't know how, like if maybe you have to have some sort of a background in programming to, to learn this language easily. I'm not sure how difficult it is for the um, new developers, uh, but I like the consistency of semantic. And it just makes it like easy to guess what's gonna happen. Okay, WTTR, uh, right, so it's gonna be a, a build, uh, WTTR, uh, not enough arguments if i provide something like this it does that and if i try to do nova cybersk uh-huh uh, and moscow okay so it doesn't know that um mm, so let's try this one and as you can see like it actually properly um url encoded it but it still doesn't work i don't know what exactly is wrong with that maybe it's something with the format uh, unknown location, please, please try. It's really strange. Sponsor stream, nobody sponsored me, by the way. Um, try to open it in browser. It's a good idea, actually. Huh. Um. It's maybe it has something to do with the agent. Uh, maybe it has something to do with the agent. Class eight extends past. Yes, that's how it works, by the way. That's how you do that. Uh, I think it ha may have something to do with the user agent. Maybe I have to set it to something. Um, all right, so let's actually explore if I have to do that somehow. Um, all right, so it's gonna be AWS. Uh, I think it's a client, hot plug. Uh, S uh, function get user. Um, I think you have to provide the user. Uh, let's go ahead and provide the user. Uh, user, uh, oh, get damn it. Uh huh. What the fuck am I? If something is wrong with me. User. Okay. Uh, your mom. Is that a good user? User agent? And I, I don't know. Maybe it it should not contain any, uh, you know, capitalized things. Um, all right. So maybe that will fix it. Let's let's find out. Uh, GPR. Mm hmm. Didn't work. I wonder, do we have a Hudson in person here? Because uh, somehow he had a similar situation, similar problem in his bot, and I'm pretty sure he solved it and he forgot how to solve it, how he solved it. Uh, so it's really strange because here it works. So we can try to see what browser sends. Um, hopefully it's not gonna expose, uh, expose me. Uh, I, I wanna be a little bit more careful with this shit, I'm sorry. 
want to be slightly more careful oh my god it's such a it's a small display i don't see shit chat i don't see shit okay um so there's a remote address uh does it show the local address i don't think it shows the local address request headers mm -hmm. So it uses user agent, like, you, the, you know, the classical browser user agent. Maybe if I use the same user agent, it will uh, work for me. Uh, we can try. Uh, and by that, I mean just to use this as a user agent. Why not? Uh, we can try to do that. So this could be a string, uh, but we will have to assign it to something. Uh, user agent string. Um, I think it has to be like a constant string, but I don't remember how to uh, properly define it though. Yeah. Um, so, and this is the user and uh, your mom there we go user agent uh, okay so let's see if it's gonna work or not mm -hmm. it actually compiled so I, I guessed it correctly uh, so let's go here and still doesn't work Wait a second. What is the status of the uh, of the response? Put line AWS response status code uh, response, and I think um, there is another thing that you have to do. Uh, like you won't be able to print it. Um, mm, you won't be able to print it. Okay, so uh, missing argument ex to call standard string and this is status call. Um, I think we have to do with AWS status, I think, but I don't remember. Is that a client? I think it's messages, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, AWS mm, status, maybe, image? Uh, I forgot which one was that status not set yes it was status uh so you take the status and you take the image and do we have a status or we don't so with aws status so this will, this is what we need to do gpr build it's my ap no it's my ap image not declared in status um okay Um, let's open messages, AWS messages, AWS status code, uh -huh. function status code. Um, oh, it's in messages, I see. I was hoping that it, maybe the status would be redirect, but it never worked. So maybe AWTTR, uh, let's take a look at this thing. Is there any documentation, like why it would return a known location? Okay, it is on GitHub. Did they ever like discuss that? Like, this is so weird. Like, why would... Well, why would it do that? And on top of that, what if I try to uh, do that via the curl? What am I doing incorrectly? Holy fuck, this is so bad and this is so infuriating. Like, don't make services like that, please. It's so bad. Um, a uh, known location. Was that ever discussed before? I'm pretty sure somebody created an issue about that. Somebody has to create an issue for that. 
page not displayed for some unknown locations. So there is such bug. Just use JS. Uh, uh, unknown location get some. Um, So it's it's a bug of the servers. It's a bug of the service, right? Isn't there some protection against the bots? I don't know. Uh, we're processing more of the million. Uh, if you go, okay, which explains empty response, curl. The location problem yesterday was caused by the problem in the. But uh, okay, so there's nothing I can do about that. It seems like a bug. It's such a weird bug. Like holy shit. Um. Anyway, <laughs> apparently I'm just wasting my time like looking into this, into that. Um, okay, couldn't care less. <laughs> ah, nice service, by the way. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> Holy fuck, okay. Um, um, okay. So, I, um, I just want to commit uh, whatever I have uh, for, for this thing. Um, get add status commit. Um, Accept uh, location via uh, CLI uh, arguments in WTTR. Okay, so I cleaned up the first example. So I also wanted to clean up the uh, the second example, right? Because this is WTTR. I might as well actually uh, put something something here. So this is what we're gonna do here. So then. Um, Build WTTR Nova Sibirsk. So this is how we do that. So and in here, um, yeah. So we have a server, but server is not called server in here. So it's called main. I think I, I will need to uh, rename. I will, I will need to rename it. Uh, oh, what's up, Gil? I don't remember if I say hi to you. Welcome. Um, server ADB. Right. I'm gonna rename it to server ADB. And because of that, I also have to rename this to the server. Cool. Uh, and in here, uh, why, no, uh, why not open weather? Um, I don't know. It's just like I use WTT, uh, like I know about WTTR. I know that Hot and Plots uses WTTR and it's super easy to query it. Uh, you can query it through curl. Um, and I don't know any other options and I just wanted some a target uh, to test the uh, AWS client. Does it make sense? Um, so it was just like an accident. Uh, so I knew about this thing and uh, I just used it. So if I knew about open weather or Acum weather, I'd probably use them, but it's just like a test. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, so what's another thing? Uh, server GPR and the main here is gonna be a server. So this server doesn't really do much, I think. I think it just uh, gives you hello world. Um, now, if I try to do GPR build p server GPR, uh, it should build things. Mm -hmm. Build example, it's actually not example, it's a server. And um, excuse me, where is the server? Didn't I build it? Didn't I build it? Excuse me. So main. Ah, I know what happened. I forgot to set uh, the object dir for it to to be built, and it actually vomited all of its guts right into the root of the project. Classic. Right. So. All right. Let's try to fix that. Essentially, what we need to do here, uh, right, I need to open that, I need to split that, and I need to steal some of the options from WTTR GPR. 
right and the option is uh, object dir so it's uh, yeah by default it actually like uh, puts things into the root and uh, to prevent it to do that you have to add this option it's, it's quite important uh, yep all right so hopefully that will do the trick and let's try to rebuild all that nice build system yeah I know um, so minus p mm -hmm. um, server adb is not a source of a project server Plug problems with the mains. Really? One more time. Uh, SRC main use server ADB. Uh, oh, it was removed with. Okay, I see. Classic. <laughs> Content classic. <laughs> Reset SRC main ADB. Uh, Checkout. Yeah. Uh, and then let's go here, move main ADB, server ADB. Uh, server ADB uh, has to be also server. Okay, uh, can we finally do that? This is not what I want. GPR build. Um, and it seems to be working in the, in the build server. Uh, yeah, you can now go to localhost 8080 and it says hello world for you. And it, it was served by an ADA code. It was served by an ADA code. Um, so another interesting thing is that I don't quite understand how to make it an infinite loop. Right, so we'll need to explore that. Um, <laughs> uh, so there's a delay here. If I don't do any delay, uh, this is not how we do that. If I don't do any delay, uh, what's gonna happen? Mm, so, um, build server, uh, it instantly, oh, okay, so it also says that this address is already in use, probably because I did control C. Probably because I did control C, okay. Mm, okay. You can always probably change this port to something else. You can we do it like this? Port uh, positive and just put this thing somewhere here. Uh, oh, it uses the port. Ah, I see. So I probably have to specify the port in here. Uh huh. So we're going to use the default port. Uh, let me put it here. Uh, yep. So here's the default port and in here is going to be just a port and I can I can I make port port you see it's basically like in Python you have keyword um, uh, keyword arguments and stuff like that and it's pretty convenient it's actually in fact pretty convenient uh, all right so what can I do now something like this so it's a little bit easier for us to build is it gonna build I think it's building okay uh, and it stops almost immediately uh, without any delay. Uh, but what if I never call shutdown? Oh, probably shutdown is important for closing sockets and stuff like that. Um, all right. Um, let's take a look at some of the examples in uh, AWS. Maybe in AWS uh, they have an example with an infinite loop because it's kind of dumb. Uh, in my opinion, if it's impossible to have just an infinite loop that like infinite service, like why would you not have that? Um, where are the examples? There are demos. Okay, so here they are. Uh, hello world, hot plug, HTTPS. Um, upload. Okay, let's, let's, let's take a look at the upload, maybe that one. Uh, is gonna have that oh server wait server queue huh look at that that's really strange okay you start in a server then you server wait on a particular key what is that supposed to mean on a particular key so you can press a key and that will stop the server uh that's very interesting all right so aws server ads right so server ads and the function is wait 
or procedure rather procedure weight here's the procedure weight uh mode termination no server the purpose of this procedure is to control the main procedure termination the, pr the procedure will return only when no server are running uh, or the q key has been pressed if the mode is set to forever uh, wait will uh, never return and the process will have to be killed okay this is actually a pretty reasonable solution in my opinion um yeah you just do instead of this shit aws uh server wait and then we just use a server q key pressed i think it's reasonable aws server key key q key pressed uh can you customize that i wonder uh, i wonder if you can customize that um all right so and uh i will stop uh if you press q okay and i'm gonna remove these things um call me on port blah 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 and it will stop if you press q cool um let's rebuild all that mm -hmm. uh, now if i do curl uh, http localhost 8080 it returns hello world and uh i can even go here it's still hello world and can i press q now okay it worked uh, i think i think it worked one more time oh okay so uh, yeah that's a reasonable solution so you just wait until uh, you press q and then it exits uh, all right so uh and let me try to do this kind of thing let me take a look who are you literally first message first message on the stream is end f right let me see Mm, okay so you were actually chatting before if you had no messages before you would get instantly timed out seriously uh all right <clears throat> so let's actually do a committee committee uh div uh-huh and in here uh, x dg open yeah, yeah so it's gonna be something like you know i'm gonna do it like this i explore <laughs> because basically i want to indicate that uh you need to use a browser to to open the link right uh, http localhost <laughs> and i never know what browser to put there like if you put chrome you will upset firefox users and if you put firefox you upset chrome and this is actually like a holy war so let's use internet explorer.exe i think it's a pretty reasonable <laughs> it's a pretty reasonable solution here um all right <clears throat> all righty that's that looks good um to, 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 to git status um git add with me uh server gpr okay server and src git status um, clean clean up the server example so basically what i was doing i was just cleaning up the examples in case you want to play with them for some reason they are pretty dumb examples to be fair but you can find all of them here right so here's the project so we have like a client we tested the client functionality of aws and we tested server functionality of aws so um i slept through your stream so do my apologies don't worry about it uh imagine me actually sleeping through my streams um all right next step next step I want you to test the uh, the SSL socket uh, abilities of the project, the SSL socket abilities of the project. But before we're gonna do that, I want to make a cup of tea. Um, oh, and I also need to make a small break, by the way. I also need to make a small break. Um, goddamn! I think uh, first I'm gonna actually fill up my my stuff. Mm, just like Dennis, yeah, Dennis likes to sleep through his streams that's for sure um alrighty does anyone have any questions so far maybe about what we're doing uh right now we're just playing with Ada. uh i don't have any particular goal in mind but i kind of want to write like a simple irc boat 
and I'm just looking through the libraries that will enable me uh, with doing that. So, so far we found like one IRC library. Um, boat, yes, bo yeah, IRC boat. Um, <laughs> one IRC library, but this doesn't support any TLS connection. So, but to, uh, at the same time, we have TLS sockets implemented in AWSL, uh, LWS, okay. in AWS. Uh, so what I'm thinking is that can we actually reuse the SSL socket from AWS in the uh, IRC library that we found? That would be interesting. So, uh, yeah. And before we do that, we need to make a small, this is not what I wanted, a small break. Mm -hmm. mm. Telegram boat when uh, when I started using it, I actually stopped using Telegram a long time ago. Um, I don't know why. To be fair. Oh, I know why because my mobile phone is shit. Okay, so I just need to buy a new cell phone, <laughs> and maybe I'll get back to t Telegram at some point. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I just remembered why I don't use it. Um, subgroup on Telegram. Yeah. Mm, okay, good. So let's make a small break and you guys uh, have fun. Mm. Yo, what's up? How everyone is doing? Welcome back to our epic Ada stream. Uh, cool. What I was doing? What the fuck is this? Uh, yep. So, IRC bot, this is not what I... Oh, God. <laughs> I guess, like, playing around with... Uh, 
Windows actually screwed up a lot of stuff here. Welcome, welcome back. Uh, what is a Pine phone? Uh, never heard of it. I'm not a huge phone person, uh, so I don't really know what's you know popular these days among kids. Um, smartphone developed by a computer manufacturer Pine 69, intended for allowing the user to have full control over the device. Ah, freedom! Ah, freedom! Freedom! Um, okay. Cool. Um, okay. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. Uh, did I commit everything? I think I committed everything. Uh, yeah, yeah, so the, the next step we need to do, uh, we need to implement like a simple SSL application that connects to a uh, free node. It doesn't even run and draw it. Oh my God. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of weird. Um, all right, so let's copy server to, let's call it free node GPR. Maybe, maybe that's what I called. Yeah, free node GPR. So, and in here uh, is going to be SRC, the build language is that, and this is going to be a free node uh, ADB. Free node ADB, cool. So let's go to SRC, free node ADB. Mm, it does? Oh, so the time, the time has come to buy it. Pro, uh, procedure. Uh, what is it called? Free node is begin end. Cool. With ADA text IO use ADA text IO. Okay. Put line. Uh, hello, free node. And now, if I try to build something here, GPR build p free node GPR, it uh, well it does not match the project. Uh huh. I already fucked it up, so it has to be free node GPR. Oh yeah, yeah, so it has to be like this. To be fair, Ada requires you to like duplicate the names of things too much, in my opinion, right? So we have to duplicate it here and here and there, and they have to match the files. It's a little, a little bit bureaucratic, um, a little bit bureaucratic. But I mean, maybe it's just like a, a side effect of this being developed for like government entities. So maybe they they like this kind of stuff. So they have a fetish for bureaucracy, uh, which does make sense. I mean, it's understandable. All right, and then if I do this, uh, there we go, hello free node. So we added another example here. We just added another example. Um, so, and we can also document it right away in the readme. So this is gonna be like this, GPR build uh, free node GPR, and just to run build. Oh, by the way, I actually fucked up. So it has to be like build server, uh, right? So build server and then this thing. Um, mm -hmm. server and this is going to be just a free note okay uh, my water is ready so I'm gonna quickly go to the kitchen and pour myself some hot water so don't go anywhere or I'm gonna connect to your server over to your west <laughs> Well, at least this is going to be a secure connection, right? So, it's good. Secure connection is better than the secure one. Um, <clears throat> Alright. <sighs> yes, Internet Explorer is actually, it's executable is iExplorer.exe. Uh, yeah. At least it was when I was a kid. But because I don't use Windows on a daily basis, I don't remember what it's called these days. Uh, without... Oh, Explore! Excuse me. I see. Thank you. Uh, I Explore. All right. Um, okay. So let's go. Let's -a go. Ooh, ooh. That's not the Mario line, that's for sure. Um, 
let me see. So here is the TLS bullshite. So we definitely need to import AWS.NET SSL. Yeah, here's the package, uh, AWS.NET SSL uh, with... Um, it's me, a word. I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, uh, .NET .NET? Huh. Is it possible to just use AWS like this and refer to all of these functions as just NET SSL? That would be actually kind of cool, but I'm not sure if it's gonna work. So let's do GPR build and see if it's gonna complain. It doesn't really complain, so which is nice. So, okay. Uh, how can we do all of that? So we have a connect, uh, but to connect to a socket, you have to create a socket. You have to think like a socket, right? Uh, so socket, host, port, wait. All right, socket type. Uh, what kind of socket types can you have? Socket type is this thing. Uh, return socket type. To be fair, like, this syntax is kind of verbose, but at the same time, it's very grab friendly, believe it or not. Like, I want to find something that returns a socket type. I just grab or search for things that return a socket type, and I quite often find it. So, and then I can want to find a function, a uh, function that uh, starts with secure. And I instantly find it, and I know that it's a function definition and not anything else. And if it's, um, you know, um, I want to find something that doesn't return any value, I can do procedure, set, and I find the procedure. So it's like these extra keywords kind of makes it easy to search for things within source code. Like, I, I don't know how to explain it. Maybe it's basically Boomer with, within me who like says that, but it kind of makes it a little bit easier. Right, and uh, like I need to get socket type somewhere. I literally, this is literally what I do. Uh, return socket type. What returns the socket type? Okay, so um, secure client uh, config and so on and so forth. So make client side SSL connection from plain socket. Ah, that's actually a pretty cool one. Uh, secure server, uh -huh, secure client. <laughs> Make client side uh, SSL connection from plain socket. Uh, it does require plain socket. So, where? Oh, you need to have a plain socket. SSL would be made automatically on the first read or explicitly by do handshake. Interesting. Do not free or close a secure socket after this call. Host parameter, its host name, uh, connection server is defined. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. But it feels like it was a little bit easier, I think. Um, create, maybe there's a function, create, function connect. Uh -huh. Okay, um, I, I forgot what was that function though. Accept socket, it's over uh, connect, all right. Oh, okay, this one is interesting. It's a in and out, so it modifies the socket. So maybe this is what I can use here. Connect socket on a given host port. Uh, but how can I create a socket? I still don't understand. Do I really have to have to use that? Secure socket, I just create a socket. So first, it feels like there is no other way, but you have to um, first create a regular socket. Like there's no other way to do that. All right, so let's actually start with plain sockets then. And I think uh, AWS has its own library for sockets. It doesn't use GNAT sockets probably. Uh, so let's actually separate everything and open AWS.NET. And I think this is where you do that. All right, and uh, you just have a socket type in here. Uh, yep, 
and how they create a socket. So what does return a socket type? What does return socket type? Uh, there we go. Security. Boolean. Interesting. Uh, security boolean. Um, false. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, huh. Okay. <laughs> Um, well, let's take a look at the implementation of this function. This is a really interesting function. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, ADB. And the, the comment doesn't really explain much. So function uh, socket is function security. Okay, so... Huh. SSL socket type. Do, do you really... Okay. And it does import SSL, so uh, SSL. Okay, so I thought, all right, all right. So I thought the relationship is, I thought the relationship is, uh, you have aws.net, which is just a regular plain socket, right? Um, um, aws.net, which is regular plain sockets. Uh, plain sockets, and on top of it, they have implemented AWS Net SSL, right? Right. This is what I thought it is, but it's actually the other way around. This is an abstraction over plain socket and SSL socket. This is an interface, interface, and this is just an implementation, like a specific implementation, a sort of like not, not strictly speaking, right? Not strictly speaking. So, and that's why the, uh, the thing that I need to use is probably aws.net and when I create a socket, I just need to create it as a secure socket and that will probably just work, um, probably. Right, and then here, do we have a function uh, connect, right? If I wanna connect or just connect. Uh, uh -huh. That's really strange. Oh, it's, it's adb. I probably need to take a look at the um, the signatures. I think signatures are a little bit more useful in this particular case. Connect, uh, accept. So can yeah, you, you can connect to it. All right. Okay. So that's that's pretty straightforward. I'm not gonna lie. You you create the uh, the socket and you just connect to the socket. It's just pretty straightforward. Let's fucking do that, mate. All right. Okay. So this is gonna be just that and just use AWNet. And the first thing I wanna do, I wanna just create a socket. Uh, better than C already. Well, I mean, we haven't tried it yet. Maybe, like, at least so far from the signatures of the functions, what I see is pretty simple. Um, so I need to pour a cup of tea. Um, actually, I oversteeped this tea, so. I wonder if I'll be able to sleep. Uh, probably not, as usual. <sighs> anyway, who needs sleep anyway? Uh -huh. So here's the connect. Socket connect. I'm sorry. Um, if I'm creating the client, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm creating the client, I don't need to bind it because it's for the service. Um, so it's going to be net socket uh, and security is going to be true. There we go. Um, I suppose I want to initialize it somewhere here. Uh, hi, chat. Is Ada regularly used today? Well, so far throughout today's stream, the Ada was used pretty regularly. I used every minute of the stream, Ada. Ada was used for every moment of the stream, so I think it's pretty regular. Um, okay, so we have a type class. Um, we have a type class of type class? No. Oh, type? Type class. <laughs> Ada has type classes. Nice. 
какво бъдат стават? Ам... So we're, we're gonna have a socket. Uh, we're gonna have a socket, and this one is gonna be net socket type. And I'm not sure if I have to do a class here, uh, but since this thing returns a class, maybe this is what I have to do here. Um, and maybe this is the famous, uh, the famous OOP of Ada. Uh, net socket true. Uh, okay, so we created the socket and the next thing I want to do, I want to connect socket connect Okay, so this is gonna be net connect Net connect socket uh, Host, what's gonna be the host? So the host is gonna be the free node one uh, free node connect Chat free node. Um, maybe I'm gonna actually make this a constant. So this is gonna be a host constant string, and this is the free node. Uh, then we're also gonna have a port, and it's also gonna be a constant, uh, but it's gonna be a positive number. As far as I know, positive is a type in Ada, uh, and it's a more general type than integers. Or maybe it's actually less general type because integers is also negative so positive is a very specific range of integers which is kind of cool so instead of unsigned they have positive oh my god this is actually very cool instead of unsigned it's positive this is so nice like it's so it just makes sense i think um all right for uh for tls for tls you have to use 6697 6697 there we go um, all right, so here we have a socket, then we connect, and then we use the host. Uh, maybe we, we also have to... Okay, so these are mandatory things. These are mandatory. Um, why not 6969? Uh, you need to ask free node developers why they didn't use 6969. If they used, I would gladly use it as well. So, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so we specified socket, host, and port. Um, and do we need to wait? They actually talked about wait. Connect the socket on a given host port. If wait is true, connect will wait for the uh, connection to be established uh, for the timeout second specified by the set timeout uh, routine. If wait is false, connect will return immediately, not for waiting for not waiting for the connection to be established. It is possible to wait for the connection completion by calling wait routine uh, with output set to true or event blah blah blah. Okay, I get it. Uh, so this is how we shut down the connection. Shut down the read or write or both side of the socket. Um, if how if how is both closed does not rise a socket uh, error if the socket is not connected or uh, already shut down. And also release any memory associated with the socket. Huh, interesting. Huh. That's actually pretty cool. So we have to shut it down to make sure that like any read write is stopped and then you can uh, free the memory. So these are like two separate steps. Okay, uh, we're gonna roll with it then. Net shut down, uh, shut down for the socket, right? And then we're gonna have net free uh, socket as well. Cool. Um, do we have anything? Okay, here is IO. So we, we can have send and we can have receive. So this thing accepts the socket uh, and the data, oh my god, it's, it's just, it's so nice. Like it's like you look at the signatures of the functions and they are like documentation, like you read them as documentation. This is so nice. Uh, okay, so we're probably going to use this one. Mm. Thank you, Shazawak. <laughs> uh, have you been on the um, on the introvert uh, party when we were creating them? Yeah, I think they're pretty cool. They turn out pretty cool. Um, choose. Uh, no. Oh, okay. Eh, it's okay. It wasn't that interesting anyway. So. <clears throat> so this is probably what we want to do here. We want to receive some data and uh, yeah, do something with it. 
So here we're connecting uh, to the stuff and let's declare some sort of a chunk, right? Some sort of a chunk. Can begin uh, and end. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's really interesting. It's kind of funny, like in Ada, you can define variables pretty much anywhere in the body of the function, but you are required to create a new scope for that, right? So declare, uh, declare block in Ada is kind of similar to uh, a new scope blocks in C, right? So in C, uh, okay, 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 we go. In C, it's going to be like that. So uh, you can create this kind of blocks, right? Right. So this is the declare block. This is what it means. And what's funny that every time you want to define a variable, like in arbitrary place in uh, in the body, you have to do that within the new scope. Like every time you want to define a variable, it has to be at the beginning of the new scope. And this is what enables you with defining new variables. It's kind of, it's kind of interesting how it forces you to do that. Can you do socket shutdown instead of net socket shut? Probably, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if this will compile. Uh, let's first try to compile this thing. So let's define a chunk. And the chunk has to be stream element count. And I would assume that stream element uh, stream element array is a part of the net. Uh, net stream element array. And let's actually do it like this. It's going to be net receive. Net receive. This is how you do that. Um, net receive. And we are providing this socket that we just created. Uh, and we don't have to provide the max because it has a default parameter. So we just receive. Uh, a chunk of the size of four kilobytes, right? This is what we're trying to reach, receive. And um, I don't know, it would be nice to print the chunk, but I have no idea how to print it. So let's actually call something uh, receive the chunk. Receive the chunk, cool. So now I wanna try to just build it and see where it's gonna fail. Okay, it fails in here, and this is because I forgot the semicolon, of course. Uh, stream um, element array is not declared in net. Uh, pretty expected. Uh, stream element. Uh, all right. So we don't know where it's defined. It's probably defined in one of those uh, Ada streams. Oh, that is very interesting. Ada streams. So it's a part of the standard library, I presume. So that means maybe we can do the following thing with ADA streams uh, use ADA streams and uh, in here I would be able to do the following thing. Will that compile now? It does compile. Okay, cool. Um, I really like how it's easy to just explore Ada without reading any stupid documentation. Do you like Ada? Well, I like the fact that I can explore it uh, and I'm not forced to read anything. That's what I like so far. The, the syntax is a little bit boomerish, but it's ca kind of convenient in some particular situations. By the way, the Master Leech, are you working for US military and you're trying to recruit me? Just joking. Uh, all right. <clears throat> okay, this entire stuff compiles. Uh, can we now try to connect to free node? Uh, hate Ada. It's the worst language. <laughs> it's not the worst script. Okay. Uh, yes, I, I forgot. I forgot that I hate it. Um, all right. So free node. Uh, Okay, wow, at least that is something. Pog, uh, ADA exception name error file cert pen does not exist. Ha. So I'm just thinking how I'm gonna approach that uh, this uh, this problem. 
Like, I see two ways I have fun. Yeah, I, I already I can already see from the name of the exception that it's gonna be a lot of fucking fun. Uh, yes. <laughs> Classic. Uh, okay, so it's actually a producing idea. Uh, third pem. Uh, actually, when is it like that? So what's gonna happen if you just like literally have the requested data but not available? Okay, at least it is actually looking for this shit in the current folder. At least this is what we know about it. So this is actually kind of cool, <laughs> right? So uh, and then we, if we remove this thing, uh, yeah, yeah, it literally looks for it in in the current folder. Um, all right. Open SSL certificates. Uh, where are they located, though? Where are they usually located? They're usually located somewhere in the, like system or something. Uh, something like ETC certificates. Oh, yeah, probably Open SSL. Uh, open. Uh, I forgot. So where on your system? I'm not sure where. Yeah, exactly. Like I remember that it even has like a concatenation of all of the like public keys. Um, like uh, specifically Debian, it has a concatenation of all of the known public keys, and there is a special script uh, in Debian that allows you to maintain this concatenation, and this is the concatenation that is used by pretty much everything in your system. But I forgot the specific of this situation. So, uh, all right, um, etc. SSL certs, yeah, certs, Java. Uh, okay. Yeah, here they are. Uh, does it have any PEM files though? Crap. Yeah, it does have PEM files though. It's like all of them are PEM files. Um, and I hope it doesn't expose anything important, so I'm not gonna actually do that. Um, it probably doesn't, but whatever. Okay, so let's do the first attempt. Let's do the first attempt. It's gonna be a uh, free node. And I'm gonna literally just copy paste this entire thing because I'm pretty sure if, like AWS probably used quite a lot. Um, find cert pem. Okay, error thrown when object. Uh, all right, results for this thing specifically. Throw on wrong exception when opening a non-existent file. Apache error. Okay, it looks like Google is not gonna help us much. Um, but there is another thing we can try. Cert pen. No results found. Yeah, it's a, it's a good sign. It's already a good sign. Uh, it's already a good sign. Okay, issues. Uh, four issues related to LWS client proxy support. And also there's a code. Uh -huh. SSL initialize. Yeah, it's already like looking for this shit. Mm. It's looking for cert pem. Mm -hmm. To be fair, if you think about it, HTTPS example worked perfectly, right? HTTPS example worked perfectly and it didn't require any cert PAM, right? And probably used this SSL sockets. Maybe it used them in a way where it was just not important or something. I suppose I, it's really strange. Um, SSL socket type. So we just really did a proxy. Uh huh. Maybe try copying. Maybe. That's a good idea, probably. But I want to understand the root cause of this thing. Third pem. Is it there? It's it's not even available there. I don't even have such a file, such file here. Uh, maybe I have it in another place. Um, certs, cert. Uh, certificate. It's something like is it C C uh, C A certificates? 
it's there on my system. Oh, well, you're using Arch, so um, I don't know what you're using to be fair. I think you're using Arch. So it's probably, probably, it's probably organized differently. Um, okay, Debian cert PEM. Self signed certificates. Um, mm -hmm. Local certs. Uh huh. The second creating certificate and then open SSL. Uh, you know what? Uh, I just want to go into the source code of this thing and just explore it uh, myself. Grab RN uh, cert pem. I just want to see who uses that and where. Uh, okay. So, AWS default, aha, aha, uh, AWS default, uh, cert PEM. Okay, security, certificate, it's looking for the cert certificate here. Who's using certificate? So that's kind of important. Um, grab certificate. Uh, this is not how we do that. Uh, it has to be recursive. Um, config set. Uh -huh. Set default. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Probably I should do that slightly different. So, so I'm in here and certificate uh, file name. Okay, so you initialize exchange certificate. Uh -huh. And you can also set whether you want to initialize the SSL layer in for config certificate must point to a valid certificate. Security mode can be used to change the method. Uh, it's true the client will send a certificate to the server. If false on the server will send a certificate. I think we need to set this thing to false or maybe somebody sets it to true for some reason. Uh, certificate. Uh, certificate. Okay, that's kind of uh, AWS net ADB certificate, and there's no mention of certificate anyway. That's really, really strange. Like, how does it reach it then? So here's the SSL, uh, and that's the only. Okay, when we're creating a socket, and when I'm connecting the socket, right? When I'm connecting the socket. Uh, connect. I need a function. Connect. It doesn't have a function, connect. AWS net. Uh, uh, already have it. Uh, yeah, 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 it's just I'm testing a different thing. Um, uh, Function connect. It's not in WS. I'm in ADS, right? Where's the connect though? Oh, it's a procedure connect. Holy shit. I'm an idiot. Okay. So uh, it's an abstract and in AWS net ADB procedure connect. Does it have procedure connect? Yeah, that's what's interesting. That's what's interesting. It has procedure connect in ads but it doesn't have it in adb this is what actually uh, like really weird about it so that means there is a probably way it's, it's probably using connect from the ssl yeah that's really interesting so is it a function connect yeah yeah, yeah. so i want to double check that this is why i'm still uh rat holing on the aws.net and not moving there because I, like it looks weird and i won't try to explore that uh, procedure connect yeah you have that uh, all right and in AWS um, do you have procedure connect you do have a procedure connect and it's pretty much the same right so and uh, let me see uh, AWS net SSL ADB what did I it doesn't exist don't tell me it doesn't exist uh huh. AWS net. I Vim is so bad at auto completion. Holy shit, it's bad at auto completion. 
uh, it doesn't have ADB. It doesn't have ADB. Like, but it only has ADS. How does that make any sense? Uh, procedure connect. Oh shit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Circuit constructor. I feel like uh, exchange. Procedure initialize. Okay, so we have procedure initialize and you get the config. Initialize the SSL layer into config certificate. Maybe this is what we need to call first. Right, maybe this is what we need to call first. Uh, Certificate must, and it doesn't return anything. All right. You can also use a null config here. So the only thing probably I'm gonna set there, so it automatically exchange. All right, it feels like maybe that's what I need to do. So this is gonna be like this, with AWS net SSL uh, use AWS net uh, right so uh, I want to use like SSL only SSL uh, right this is SSL thingy package right this is a package uh -huh, it's a package Me initialize uh, and initialize uh, config so it's gonna be SSL null config we're gonna use null config it's actually quite handy that it's available there uh, null config um, certificate file name you have to provide it you have to provide it we probably can use the defaults but I forgot where they're located so um, with AWS defaults the AD files are in uh, SSL, open SSL, ADB. There is implementation for different SSL libs. Ah, that makes sense. Thank you. Um, what I was doing? What I was doing? Oh, yeah. Okay. So it's a certificate file. Exchange certificate. I wonder if I uh, say don't exchange certificate. Do I need to provide certificate file? Uh, yeah, default. Um, ah. um, all right. <laughs> Copy your XXX. Which one? What does it mean? I have a lot of things there. Um, I have a lot of things there. And is the uh, thing... Why... Oh my god, I, I lost the trail of thoughts. I, like, I have the trail, specific trail of thoughts and chat is debating me into... It's a CA certificate. It's probably not gonna work. If it's not gonna work, you're banned, straight up. Well, okay, not banned, but timed out for at least an hour. Um, okay. Mm. Copy uh, ATC SSL. Certs CA certificates uh, cert PEM right so uh, we're gonna copy it here uh, it's pretty it's pretty big cool um, now so let's try to build this entire thing GPR build uh, P free node GPR cool defaults not found uh huh. Ban incoming! Ban is fucking incoming! We're already trying it! Okay, so let's make sure that I actually tested everything correctly, right? So uh, the requested data was not available. Alright, so as I promised, timeout. Uh, Psy for rec 1, 1 hour. There we go. Uh, okay, so let's remove that. 
third pem. Mm, now, let me try to recover my trail of thoughts. Okay. So, uh, all right. So let's try to initialize everything here, right? Uh, so we need to do this thing with AWS default. Uh, I think it's just default, right? And uh, I need to open it here, but I don't want to open it anywhere. Like Vim, uh, AWS um, default uh, certificate, certificate. Uh, TLS ticket support. Oh, it's just empty. It's just literally empty, I think. But it's a certificate file name. Okay, so I'm gonna actually put an empty thing there. Sure. SSL uh, initialize, initialize. SSL uh, no config. Certificate name is gonna be empty. So, and hopefully the exchange certificate false will do its trick. Hopefully, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, yep. And let's just do GPR build. Is it gonna do anything? Config must be a variable. Huh. Okay, so uh, let's define it like that then. Oh shit, and also look at that. I create I create a socket after I do initialization, so that means I have to do that in a declaration here. All right, I have to do that in a declaration. Uh, all right, so that makes sense to me at least. Uh, that makes sense to me. That makes sense to me. Uh, so here's that, and on top of that, we may want to have a config. Uh, we may want to have a config. It has to be a variable SSL config. Because it's gonna uh, actually modify it. Right, it's gonna actually modify it. Right, is it gonna do the thing? Is it gonna do the thing? Uh, build free. Okay, file perm. It, st it still requires it. Okay, so that means. All right, what is that? Another ban? question is like why HTTPS works right so this is the real question right uh, we have HTTPS request um, in our client which definitely uses TLS sockets uh, but it doesn't have any problems uh, to be honest, you shouldn't have to... Exactly, that's what I'm talking about. This is complete bullshit. And again, I'm repeating that. We already used TLS sockets in the form of HTTPS GET request. I'm repeating again. We already used them in the form of uh, HTTPS request. Um, so let's actually do GPR build. P, W, T, T, R. There we go. Um... For those who are still suggesting, just copy certificate, just create certificate for all of you who's still suggesting this weird stuff, we already used HTTPS sockets in the form of HTTPS request. In the form of a HTTPS request and I didn't have to do shit. You see what I mean? So we have these SSL sockets and we have abstraction over it in the same library and the abstraction is configuring it somehow so we don't have to do that. Like, come on, people, come on. Holy shit. All right, so the question is what exactly is it doing then? Right, so how does it configure it and what does it provide there and what else? 
uh, we need to understand that. Um, okay. So this is IRC board, this is that. Um, <clears throat> mm -hmm. So I'm still in here. Uh, and what I'm using for uh, for this thing, I'm just using a client, right? So it's going to be AWS. Uh, AWS client, right? Client. Uh, and I want to look into it. So I'm going to look at the procedure. Uh, actually, function. Function get. So what exactly is it doing? So it creates an HTTP connection, all right? Uh, persistent and uses a particular certificate and it uses default client certificate, right? It uses a default client certificate and I should have actually done that. So if I separate this entire thing, uh, AWS default, right? Client certificate and it's empty. It uses the default client certificate, uh, function get. Okay. Should mm, be connection, create, blah, blah, blah. I think we need to go deeper into create the HTTP connection. The question is where it is located. Uh, do we have AWS HTTP or something like that? So where can we get the create? Who defines the create function? Uh, okay, here it is. So uh, certificate, so here is the certificate. Uh, return connection HTTP and it redirects it to another create. Um, okay, okay, so this is interesting. So this is like the main create. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, so net SSL config, you use net SSL config, all right. Um, certificate bound proxy data connection authentication URL security default SSL config. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Trouser down. Thank you so much for tier one subscription. Your first subscription, by the way. And welcome. Okay, so this is what it's doing. It's uh, trying to call this function um, SSL initialize that we were trying to call as well. But certificate, right, that it use, uh, uses, right, certificate. Um, pay meal 32. Thank you, thank you for, for subscription, Twitch Prime subscription, and welcome to our Epic Ada Club. Welcome, welcome, welcome. The certificate is just the default uh, default client certificate, which is, um, you know, um, nothing. Uh, all right, so this is a secure connection. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what we need to do. But we already tried to do that, but maybe... Uh, I just didn't do that correctly. Um, maybe I need to do a net SSL version 2.3 client. I can try to do that. Um, so let me let me try to do that one more time. Mm -hmm. Net SSL SSL version 2.3 client. Uh, yeah, I know that I probably shouldn't use this thing, but uh, I just I'm just trying to copy whatever is going on here. Uh, because it works for them. It might work if we change the default user agent to Mozilla. What default user agent are you talking about? We're trying to establish connection to IRC. IRC is not based on, based on HTTPS. What are you talking about? All right, so... Um, <clears throat> Okay, let's try to rebuild that. Uh, this is not what I was trying to rebuild. Uh, web tips, that is exactly. <laughs> no, we're one layer lower than HTTP. One layer lower. User agent is defined there. They're using is to bound a string that might be useful to note. Um, Uh, 
Uh, I don't think so. A to bounded string basically converts one string type to another string type. So I don't think it transforms the content of it. So, uh, I, but it may affect how functions are overloaded. So that could be a thing. Uh, but anyway, still file certificate does not exist. All right, so uh, let's try another thing. Let's try another thing. Uh, IO exception name uh, file. Let's find grab rn does not exist. <sighs> let's try to find that. This is a parameter ideas. Uh huh. All right. SSL to this thing. Um, file. But it actually it's it's not printed like that. So it could be somewhere else. Oh shit. <sighs> So SSL config we're using no one and certificate. By the way, does it even affect anything? If I try to do something like your mom PIM, is it gonna affect anything? So that's a good question. Is it gonna affect anything? Frame node. Oh, it does affect something. Okay. Um all right, all right, this is something interesting. So can I uh, not exchange certificates now? Um, exchange certificate. Uh, false. Maybe I have to explicitly say that. I'm not sure if I have to do that. Um, okay. Is there a specific reason for using other or is it just for fun? Yes, there is a specific reason is because it's really paid uh, well. So an average Ada developer is paid way more than an average Python or JavaScript developer. So, and I think everyone should jump on that Ada train. So that's the reason why I'm using because I love money. Uh, all right, so what else do we have here? Does it work then? Is it something with the with the thing? AWS uh -huh. net SSL. Uh-huh. SSL ideas. Insurance. Well, good re exactly. I'm telling you, if it doesn't make you um, rich, it's not worth even doing that. Come on, bro. Okay, initialize uh, certificate fail name. Exchange certificate required. I can can I just set certificate not required? Like initialize a cell error into config into the config. Certificate file. Uh, okay, I can initialize that into the config, but now uh, I have to use that config then at some point. Okay, so that's probably what I need to do. Oh shit! I think I know. All right, all right. So um, config. How do I use it then? So I just initialize it uh, and support for server okay so initialize default config certificate file name release set config okay set the ssl configuration version for the secure oh. found it okay so cool 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 now uh i probably don't even need any of this shit. so you set that then you create a socket and then you need to set the config for that socket holy shit. Uh, set config because it just initializes that config all right so socket um, and uh, we're just gonna set it there, there we go um, 
That is very interesting. Okay. Um, so is it gonna work now? Is it gonna work? Uh huh. So I see that's what's gonna bring all of the money. That's why I'm learning all of that. We're gonna be fucking rich once we learn this language. Um, set config is not declared in net. Oh, because it's actually declared in SSL. Right, SSL. Cool. Uh, all right. So uh, expected private type. Did they do a fucky wacky? So first has to be the socket. Oh shit. It has to be a socket type, but we have a socket class. I'm confused. Okay. Oh. All right. So uh, here's the connection and SSL config. SSL config. Uh, where do we use SSL config and how? Uh huh. All right. So this is just a client SSL config. And then you close. And I'm going in circles. Okay. Um, so you have to set the config for the socket, but the problem is that we don't have a socket type. We don't have a socket type. We have a socket class, and I don't really understand what's the difference between them. Then, because you can create a new socket, uh, you, you you cannot do things like this. Like it's not going to work. So that's the problem. Uh huh. Type of the object cannot be abstract, maybe class wide. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, so maybe we should just look at some of the examples because it's really not clear how to use all of that. I'm closing everything here. Everything, everything. Go away, go away. Too many, too many tabs. Oh, it's, it's actually so slow to close. Um. Add a core AWS. Add a core AWS. Oh my god, so slow. Mm, do you have any TLS or SSL examples? It doesn't have anything. Cert. Certificate callbacks. So ADB. Uh -huh. So config object service start. All right, so it's a waste of time. Um, the thing is, maybe I need to create everything. Um, so what returns? Uh, socket type. I think nothing returns a socket type in here. I think nothing returns a socket type. Secure client, yeah. Make client side SSL connection from plain socket. Yes. That's how probably we... Holy shit, this is how we have to do that, apparently. I think. Uh... Yeah, I think that's how it has to be done, unfortunately. Secure client. Okay, let's let's try it this way, because this is originally how I want to do that. Uh, and maybe because of that, we don't even need to initialize anything, because it's going to use SSL config anyway. Uh, right, it's going to use it anyway. Um, all right, so here's the config. I'm going to remove all of that. And then I create like a regular non-secure... Uh, but maybe I have to make it secure. Let's, let's make it not secure. Oh, by the way, so if I make it not secure and just try to connect, is it gonna even work? This is something that I never tried. Uh, okay, so, and this thing has to be a class. It's gonna actually crash. Uh, free node. Okay. 
So it's trying to do things, uh, but let's try the uh, um, non-secure one. So if I remember correctly, the plain socket, uh, the plain text is this, right? But the plain text is this. Um, and what we're trying to do here, we're just trying to receive, uh, yeah, GPR. Um, it works. Um, so it works. The only thing that doesn't work is uh, that we can even try to print that chunk, but I'm not sure how to do that. Um, so ADA include. Do I just have ADA? So this is AWS, but uh, do I have any other things? Uh, ADA include. Okay. Um, Ada streams. I need some functions to work with Ada streams. Uh, at least convert them to string. So Ada streams. You have stream uh, element and stream elements, by the way. Uh, stream element array. Stream element array. Okay. Um, you can read and write and stuff like that. And it would be nice for me to somehow turn it into a string and print on standard output okay so we can have a stream so a the text io text streams cool oh you, you this is a socket types okay int I'm already tired, god damn it. Uh, I want to finish this, but I'm already tired, god damn it. Um, and it's not really easy to understand what the fuck they're trying to do. Uh, serialization function. Yeah. All right, so let's try to do, uh, at least connect uh, via SSL. Let's try to connect via SSL. Maybe that will do the trick. So the way we're going to do that is uh, first we create a non-secure socket. Uh, right then we need to turn it into a secure client. Uh, secure client. Mm, so maybe I'm going to literally call it like that. Uh, client. And this one is actually uh, going to be a socket type from SSL. Um, socket type. Oh, it's not gonna work that easily. Okay, I'm really tired. Oh, holy fuck. Like, oh shit. No, I cannot. Whew. It's hard. It's hard, man. Uh, but we can try to at least uh, turn stream element array into a string and print it. At least we can try to do that. Oh, at least we can try to do that. Uh, serialization functions. Um, okay. Uh, Ada print stream element array. Is it possible to do something like that? Uh, should I start timing out people for telling me to use Zig? I think I should start doing that. Um, like half of an hour timeout every time somebody's mentioning Zig. Uh, all right, so uh, efficient stream serial port because you're not fucking helping seriously. Um, so uh, what we're doing here, right? Um, print stream not null access. Can I just use print? So they show these signatures, but I, I would like to see examples. Uh, they're not really useful. These signatures are not very useful, uh, I think. So uh, yeah, they're not very useful, but we can try. Print chunk, and it also accepts what? It accepts offset, all right, or item, or what, what was that? What was the print? Uh, item. Um, 
Uh, okay, so... 10? Uh, I, I don't know, like, what does it do? Uh, does it even explain anything? Um, I, I don't know how to use that. <laughs> okay. I have a chunk and I literally don't know what to do with that chunk. So, um, yeah, print is undefined. Okay, so it's not even defined in streams. Um, okay, Ada streams. Is there, like, at least example? At least example, because these signatures are not useful. They're not explaining anything. I just want an example that shows, okay, you have this stream or stream array. This is the things you can do with them like that. And this is how you print them, uh, how we can print them. Like it would be nice, but this is not really useful. I don't understand like what do you want from me. Um, uh, stream element is mod. Uh, all right. So apparently this is the only information we have about ADA streams. Okay. Streams are powerful IO mechanism that allows reading and writing any type of object to any type of medium. Uh, network connection streams are cool. Examples. Uh, abstract streams. Um, okay, so there is this thing. I don't know what that is, but... Um, abstract streams. Serialization function. Uh, how to use that? Ada streams example. A single example would be really appreciated. Like, at least, like, get the gist of how to use this stuff because I don't understand how to use them. Um, okay, streams are your um, fruit read. Where is the fruit though? Uh huh. Is, is that it? Uh, file and I/O streams. Create and write to a stream. Create or write to file. Is is this it? Um, uh, stand library text I/O. Okay. But where are the streams? I don't see streams. Okay, stream I/O. There we go. Uh, are you gonna jump there? Thank you. Okay, so, but it's not what I'm using here. I'm using some sort of array thingy. I have no idea how to use it. Um, stream access, it doesn't explain me anything. This is not really useful. Um, I don't know how to handle this array thingy. Um, maybe, I, like, okay. If I could find the source code for ADA streams, maybe I could find functions that consume string element array and do something with them. Uh, but I don't know where these things are located. So I found the place user share ADA, ADA includes, and it only contains AWS there. It doesn't contain anything else. It contains this XML things. Um, but where can I find the standard library of ADA? Um, like, I don't know where I can find it. Um, so, Ada streams. So, if I, if I Google something like that, uh, I just want to find the source code. Um, so, this is just streams.io. Uh, this is very close, but not exactly because I'm importing not the stream.io, but the array. Um, so, is it possible to. This is not really good. Package stream. Okay, I think this is what I want. So stream element, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Um, so you have a read, right? And you have a write. A root stream type. A root stream type is an abstract thingy here. So um, I think we need write, right? Because the input is going to be stream element array and root stream type. And what do you do? The abstract type is the root type of the class of the stream. So it feels like uh, I have to have something that can be put there. And maybe one of these things that can be put there is the standard output or something. Right, I can try to write uh, this thing into standard output. But how can I do that? So if I try to write um, standard uh, output, 
chunk. How can I, like, where can I get the standard output? Um, where can I get it? I'm not sure. STD out. Oh, wait, STD out? There was something standard. Standard. Okay. Suppose now that one was to print the description of 42 the standard the following int right text stream stream current output returns a stream access associated with the file given as the parameter. Okay, you have to do this int right, but is do I need to do int right? Print the description of 42 in the standard output. This is not what I want. Ooh. Uh, okay. So, right. Uh, current output. Text streams. I also need to import text streams, I presume. Alright. So, uh, ADA streams uh, with ADA strings text strings i'm pretty sure it makes sense but it's extremely confusing um uh -huh. all right Package body example has example of print function for int. You can maybe adapt it to string. Maybe I just want something that would print something on the screen. Um, okay. Current returns the stream access. Well, like I just don't understand what how to use that. It doesn't make any sense. Um, like I wish it would just make some sort of sense. It just doesn't make any sense. Um, maybe it has to click or something. It's hopefully probably not gonna. It's not a predefined library unit. Missing. Uh, okay, three. Um, what? Text streams. Text IO. Oh shit. Oh my god. Okay. Um, text IO. Text streams. Uh, yeah, use text IO. I see. Uh, I'm try I'm starting to fade out. Okay, okay, at least it's int is not visible. Why? And uh, non visible it's missing okay, so at at twenty one uh -huh. Okay, there's like extra thing here that is not neat. Int is not visible. Why is it not visible? I don't know. Mm. Scroll up to their example. Uh, doesn't help me. I don't understand how to use it. I don't understand. I don't understand anything. It doesn't make any sense. Ooh, I just want to print this entire thing. Why, why can't I just print that? It's so bad. It's so bad. Um, chunk. Um, do you have something like image uh, chunk which I can pr just print on the standard output? Why is this so hard? I have a chunk. Let me print it on standard output. It's super easy. Uh, I cannot do that. Anaboth gifted a tier 1 sub to uh, Out9. Thank you. Thank you, Anaboth, for uh, gifting uh, a tier 1 sub. Thank you for supporting the channel. And uh, Out9, welcome to our epic Ada Club. Uh, as integer. Oh, holy fuck. Uh, and I already removed everything. Uh, no, I didn't remove everything. Okay. I'm, I'm just so frustrated that uh, I wasted all of my energy and I cannot do anything anymore. Um... Expected type, found type, ADA stream element array. Okay, um, can I do this thing then? 
stream element array. Uh, print is undefined. Okay. Ooh, 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 ooh. All right. All right. All right. All right. So int, it works for int. Um, so it's a stream element array. It's a stream element array, and I just want to print it on the standard output. Ada stream element array to string. That's the only thing I want. <laughs> That's the only thing I want. Like, I don't even want that much in my life. Um, okay. Stream. Okay. Serial port string to stream element. Okay. Is there any way to quickly do that? Please. Please tell me it's possible. Stack overflow. You just thank you. I can Google too. Thank you so much for Googling. I literally looking at this thing. Oh my God. You think I don't know how to Google? Um, mm, okay. Stream element array string. Uh, cool. Mm. Buffer serial. Uh huh. Wait a second. You can actually just take this thing. Wait, 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 wait. Um. Can I do chunk? Right. And what is st? Uh huh. Can I write to text streams then? Wait a fucking second. Uh, so I write it and M is an integer. Uh-huh. So apparently... So this doesn't make any fucking sense. So here's the buffer. Oh, okay. It's, it's commented out. Um, sir? What is sir? I didn't see sir. Where is sir? Uh, serial communication. It's a gnat. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, it's making sense. The error is on line 23. Are you trolling me? Um, the problem is not the error. What the fuck are you talking about? You're trying to piss me off intentionally. I swear to God, you're trying to piss me off. Um, all right. Mm. Write attribute. Uh, procedure as write is defined as follows. To convert item to a sequence of stream elements. I don't understand how to use it. Interray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, text streams, stream current output ten. Attribute must be prefix of a right has to okay. Um Okay. I just have a stream elementary. How do I print it? Like it's how do I print it? How can I output it? Like I don't understand. Uh, like, ah, uh, and it's just so bad. Oh my god. I have no idea exactly. Just print it. 
<laughs> ah! uh, stream uh, add stream element array print okay uh it's holy shit it's so bad like why is it so obscure though like okay like it wouldn't be that bad if it wasn't so obscure it's like we, we could at least figure it out um uh, where do we get it from by the way so we get it from receive examples are useless like, holy fuck yes i didn't expect it like the rest of the language is so nice but all of a sudden this piece of shit just hits and oh my god uh all right receive receive um so receive timeout who wants to receive timeout uh what do you call uh, function net receive so we are in the in the net okay uh it's a classified knowledge yeah yeah aws net uh ads yeah function receive uh all right reads a chunk of data from returns as this call always uh all right so let's actually go into aws net adb uh, can i can i go there yeah function receive uh all right so here is the element array elements of set and it just uses this receive okay so we need to take a look at another receive it's a procedure receive procedure receive there's no procedure receive oh my god there's only one receive holy fuck where is the another one um there's also net std oh my god it's it's located at some other place holy shit okay um Mm. Add uh, include AWS. Uh, receive. Uh, let's take a look at this thing. All uh, right. I think I did a fuck you back. I'm not sure if, I, if it's the correct way of doing that over there. Um, procedure. There is procedure receive, but there is no like. Oh, there's web sockets. Look at that. I just want to take a look at the implementation of that shit. Holy fuck. Okay. Uh. Uh. Return result. Redirects to all of this shit. AWS net std ads. Oh, here it is. I think I found. Yeah. Um, AWS net std ads. It doesn't exist. Fuck me. Oh shit. Classified knowledge. Holy shit. Um, what I'm trying to find is actually okay. I think I know what I tried. I'm trying to find procedure, procedure receive. That's what I'm trying to find. Um, okay, so this is oh shit. Oh fuck. Um, yeah, I need to remove this thing. Uh, so here's that. It's abstract, but we need specific implementation. Uh, procedure receive. Okay, so this is a specific implementation. Uh, record receive. Okay, so they're, they're all using all of this stuff. Uh, overriding. Okay. Is there another implementation? Net SSL, unwinding, memory receive. Stream memory read. Okay. Stream 
efficient stream uh, array type integer right Ada has a notion of streams that are much like those of other languages, synthesis of elements comprising values of arbitrary possibly different types. Placing a value into a stream is easy, using the language defined stream attributes. Uh, the programmer simply calls the type spe specific attribute routine and specifies the stream and the value. For the example, they place the integer value into the stream as one could do. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, right. Okay, uh, I now want to extract. Uh -huh. So, strictly speaking, S is not a stream, but rather an access value designated stream. An integer write uh, will convert the value into the array of stream elements, essentially an array of storage elements, and then put them into the stream designated by S. Actually, placing the bytes into the stream is accomplished by dynamically dispatching the procedure. Okay, you're basically serializing all of that. Uh, write, you write to the procedure. Okay, I, I'm starting to understand that. Uh, read, a the streams read and all right. I think I know. Um, uh, so here is that. Uh, uh, I want to read a char. Uh, all right, I'm reading the char character. Um, you have to know the uh, the item. Uh, read so the stream root stream type no it doesn't make any sense um, excuse me so the type is stream element array they don't even mention it properly in above, we can simply convert a value of item of array type buffer to a value of type stream element array. So we work with pointers instead. We define access type designated as stream element array that is exact size of the term stream elements. What the fuck do you want? Like, how more obscure can you make this? Holy shit, um, like I'm, okay, this is extremely obscure, obscure API. Um, mm. Oh, what is going on? Like I'm actually confused, holy shit. root stream type up until this moment it was clear okay i would assume that is stream element array an array a, a, a stream mm. so can i read like uh, i would expect that i can uh, read from it Okay, stream element is standard storage unit. Stream array is array of uh, stream element of set of alias of stream. It's array of stream elements, and stream elements is a single storage unit, and root stream type is something more abstract. So it's it's an array of units, uh, unit storage, and they're probably bytes or something like that, right? So uh, you can write an item which is a stream into this thing and then this is the output so basically if you have a stream you're writing at the same time you also can take this stream thingy uh, the language defined root stream type uh, deployed package streams the user defined read buffer write buffer could you do string read some string that's a good idea but it could be more of an unbound string the problem with strings is that they have to know uh, they have to have a uh, specific um, size and they have to be initialized so um, let's define some string this is a good idea unbound string uh, which probably doesn't have to be defined 
Uh, I think it's more of a. Well, we can try. Uh, we can try uh, uh, with a well, whatever. I'm already tired. Unbound string. So we're reading that into some string, and this is a chunk. And uh, then we can try to print. Uh, yeah. Let's just try to compile this entire stuff. Um, Okay, so missing unbound string is not defined. Uh, first of all, because we have to uh, import something. Uh, add a unbound, unbounded, and I think, yeah, unbounded. I fucked it up. Unbound string. Uh, it's also not visible because, yeah, we have to import something. Unbound string. Come on. Uh, so what do I have to import? What do I have to import? Please tell me. Uh, ADA strings unbounded. Okay, cool. Uh, with ADA strings unbounded, use ADA strings unbounded. There we go. So if I try to compile that now, uh, and all right, so and that one has to be unbounded. Uh, so there is no read attribute for unbinding string incoming. Expected access to class print is undefined. Oh, it failed here. What? Wait, wait a second. Uh, expected access to root stream uh, compilation phase failed. What? Um, all right. So class. Um, Found okay. Tag type required. Found private type. It re oh it requires type. I think. Wait. Holy shit. Okay, I'm don't know what well. I'm closing everything. One more time. Add a stream element array to string. I already tried that, um, but I just cannot. Sockets, common transport, streams, Google groups. Uh, holy shit. Okay. Stream. Uses message. Mm -hmm. Fuck yeah! Look at that. Stream elements are in. Fucking fun. Holy shit! Like, why the only way to know how to work with this thing is to find it in a very fucking obscure place somewhere? Holy shit! Um. Okay. <sighs> okay. I think I think we can we can at least try to print already. Um. So here's the here's the chunk that we received. Uh. And what I need to do is I, uh, in chunk range and you loop over it um, like end loop like this nice language but well nice documentation rather I would say um, so here's the output line and oh you can just index it you can just fucking index it it's a it's an array why didn't I think about it yeah it's defined as an alias of an array you can just fucking index it I suppose uh, so in the output line uh really uh so this output line and is output line even a well-known thing uh output line is a str okay <laughs> uh procedure dump right 
So you fill up the output line. Holy shit, okay. So he has... Yeah, he has a buffer. He fills up that buffer until it's completely filled up. And then, uh, I don't know why I say he, like they do that. And uh, then they just print on the, uh, on, the, on the stand output. Okay, that makes sense. Can I allocate the string of the size of the chunk? Is, is that possible? I think I should be able to because, um, okay, stream and stream like last. I should be able to do something like last string um, uh, output, right? String from one uh, type, yeah, yeah, string from one to uh, socket, actually not socket. Let's put it here. From uh, chunk last, right? From chunk last. Um, do I need to initialize it? I don't think I need to initialize it if I have something like this, so we know its size and stuff like that. So we're iterating through all of that, and what I'm doing essentially, I do an output i, uh, and I'm assigning chunk i to it. So essentially, I'm copying this thing like that. Right, will that compile? That's a good question. Uh, expected type, standard type, uh, standard integer, um, but got stream element of set. Uh, all right, can I just do something like two integer? Like, element of set is image last. No, 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 image is to convert to strings. Uh, it's to convert to strings. Um, I think it's something like uh, element uh, procedure procedure dump uh, index natural. Uh, mm. And what element? What is element of set though? Uh, stream element array. So element of set is probably set to something. Uh, I want to know the the type. Um, stream element stream uh, of set is a range implementation defined. Okay. Um, range is implementation defined. So you cannot use the element of set. Uh, to do things like that but we know the size of the chunk we know the size of the chunk and we know that it's not going to be super big uh, maybe we can do something like length can you take the length of the chunk is that okay I, you can do that nice found stream element of set okay Uh, ADA to integer, integer, convert string to integer. Maybe we can use the same method to integer value. Okay, so can I do integer value? Uh huh. Expect it's okay. It expects strings, so we cannot just do it like that. Okay. Um, safer to do. Yes, yeah, actually, a good point. But um, okay, that's actually a good point. Let's actually use that. And maybe uh, it's going to be like this first, last. But both of them are stream of sets, so they're not us usable for. S yeah, you see their stream of sets. They are not necessarily integers, so it's not going to really work like that. Cast it has integer. What? What are you talking about? You don't make any sense. All right. So, and by the way, when I do a range, uh, what if I try to print this entire thing? Is it even, it's a stream element, right? So it's a stream element. So, uh, put line. So, what type is it? It's probably going to be a uh, stream offset. Uh, 
So what's the type? Expected type standard. It's element of set. Okay. Uh, can you do something like this actually? Maybe, maybe I just can do something like this. Uh, no candidate interpolation matched. Okay. All right. So we have different types of medium, and we have a different types of indices, and this is why you have this output buffer that is so weird. All right. So uh, this is probably what we we'll have to do. I'm gonna do like uh, 120. Um, 48 496 yes so this is what we're gonna have here and um, so we're doing the range right so we're doing the range um, and we're also gonna have additional index which is the integer right so this is the integer and it's initially zero uh, right so and how we're we gonna do that I'm gonna do output uh, index equal chunk I um so and uh what's gonna be the next thing so we also have to increment index here as well um mm -hmm. increment index here as well um so, since i know it's not gonna be greater than that so i don't really care that much um mm -hmm. uh, so, 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 um, So is it gonna do think? Let's actually try to compile that. Uh, okay, and there we go. We also have a stream element. And how is it done in the example, by the way? Uh, how did I lose the example? I hope I didn't lose the example. Uh, dump. Aha! Uh -huh. Oh shit! This is actually very interesting. Uh, natural plus one hex holy shit you know what so and it prints it does it what is verbose by the way verbose why what is verbose where is it where is it defined the fuck is verbose uh i don't understand it feels like a procedure holy shit oh my god uh okay so so i'm gonna literally copy paste it here it's so bad um um, okay, so we have something like this, which is interesting, I'm not gonna lie. So the output line is defined in a, in a different place. Output line, output line is a string of this specific type. Um, and also hex, yeah, it, it will pr also probably... Uh, I didn't know we have to implement so much just to facilitate all of that. Uh, that's actually, okay, that's very strange. Uh, do you still think add is interesting? Yes, I still think so. Are you trying to piss me off intentionally? I wouldn't really suggest doing that right now. Okay, so um, let me try to do that. Is undefined. Oh, you you do trying to piss me off intentionally. Okay, so please don't do that because I really like it and I don't want to ban you. Uh, okay, verbose is not defined. We need to uh, understand where can we get the verbose, but it doesn't really make any sense in my opinion because um, yeah, I think it's just like you can remove it because in this particular context. Uh, it's it's not needed at all. Uh, uh, it's not needed at all. 
Okay. So, uh, expected... Okay, so it's not solving any pro... Okay, well, this is what we have here. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And uh, let's dump the chunk. So, probably don't need any of this stuff. Uh, all right, a missing semicolon. Um, okay. It compiles. Uh, so, essentially, you have to do all of this... Yeah. <laughs> This is so dumb. This is really bad. Seriously, like you, you have to map all of this shit like in here. Oh my god. Uh, strange. This is really strange that this the library itself just doesn't allow you to do that easily. But maybe I just don't know it really well, right? Maybe I just don't know it really well. And if I try to do free BSD, uh, not free BSD, but build free node, uh, and. Um, it doesn't do anything, probably because I'm using some... Uh... Okay, we're using like a proper things here, but it doesn't print anything. Uh, so if I try to do it like that, it's gonna be print uh, chunk, right? Did we receive the chunk? Uh -huh. um, GPR build p print node GPR. So is it gonna do a thing? Uh, print uh, was it put line? It was put line, yes, yes. Uh, put line. Um, am I using the wrong host? Oh, port, I mean. Yes, I'm using the wrong port. Okay, so it received the chunk. Now uh, I'm gonna dump the chunk. Mm. Cool. <laughs> well, it, it, at least it's something. This is what we received from uh, f from the free node server. This is what we managed to receive from it, which is not bad. Uh, by the way, I want to put some info here, right? Stolen, uh, like note, stolen from uh, this specific place, right? So, just to be clear. Um, so here as an index, we use natural index. Uh -huh. Then we take a stream, which has its own index. We divide it by 16, um, convert it to natural and stuff like that. Okay, that, that makes sense. I, I see what they're trying to do here. I see what they're trying to do here. Um, yeah, so you need a natural index. A natural index. All right. So you divide it by 16 and you can cast it to natural. But can I cast it to a character instead? That will be hella interesting. Okay. So for I in a chunk a range, whoop and whoop. Right. So we have a chunk i. So this thing is a string element. And what I want to do here is convert it to char, but I'm not sure if it's going to really work that well. Right, so the output is going to be a string from this thing, uh, 96, right? So it's going to be here. Um, and we need an index, uh, right, we need an index. Uh, you're not helping express mind. Uh, natural is gonna be zero. Uh, all right. So output index. Okay. So this is probably not how it has to be done, but I hope uh, maybe there is like a char, uh, but uh, like in Pascal. But we'll see how it goes. Index. Mm -hmm. So let's try to compile this thing. Uh, chair is not visible, all right. So, um, mm, 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 Ada character by code. How was that? So maybe, yeah, first of all, it has to be converted to natural. Maybe that's what we have to do. And then we'll character how to store. Uh, well, in Pascal, you, I'm pretty sure you have like something like CHR, but I would expect that there's something like that in Ada as well. 
um, okay, ADA, CHR, and ORD. You know the, these things, how to do this. So instead of like giving me this lecture, you could have at least told me how to do CHR and ORD. That would be actually helpful. Um, okay. Character, maybe it's character. Uh, Alright. So character codes, ADA. Uh, t -t 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 character pose, Val. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Uh, character uh, was it Val? Yes, I think it was Val. And it seems to be working. Cool. Um, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Uh, and then we can try to print this line. Like put. Uh, Line? It was a two line? Okay, so it's gonna be output. Uh -huh. Okay, so free now. Uh, index check file, okay. So uh, let me see. So index is. Ah, it has to be one. Yes, of course. It has to be one. <laughs> okay, so we got some garbage. That's actually pretty cool. Mm mm. So this is probably because maybe I really fuck up something somewhere. Yeah. Uh, I would expect this to be like a number, like a byte number of some sort. Hmm. So when we go back to what it outputted, like 3a, all of them seem like ASCII values, right? So we don't, they, they're ASCII. So the question is why it didn't work. Mm -hmm. Didn't work? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So here is the... And it's also plus one. Why, why the fuck it is plus one? So the natural... Ah, because it's an index. It has to be an index. Yes, I see. Mm. Because, well, this is supposed to be. Wait. What is the plain text? Is it really a plain text? Because it would explain if it was a secure connection. <laughs> Wait a second. Free node. Uh, connect to free node. 667 is correct. So, okay. Uh, look at the first line. It's there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Plain, uh, for plain text. You're printing some garbage afterwards. Oh, shit, I see. Oh, okay. That means it works as expected. It works as expected. I assume that everything was garbage. So, if only the first part is not garbage, it is exactly what I expected. So, everything's okay. <laughs> Holy fuck. Okay, so, um, yeah. That's, that's okay. Um... So for i in uh, output output range, right? Uh, right. So you print a memory. I was actually printing on not initialized memory. Um, I think you can also do slices. We can try to slice it, but I need to know the uh, the chunk length. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing we do, we can we can try to initialize it. Another thing we can tr try to do is to, well, we can try to allocate exactly as needed. That's one thing we can do. Um, so uh, something like length, right? And uh, then we can do a natural, 
right? And since we have our own index that we maintain, using first as last is not necessary. I'm saying that for those people who are constantly concerned about that and potentially didn't leave the stream, okay? And that's why I'm using length instead of first and last. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. So, um, <clears throat> uh, I wonder if I need to do nature. I think it has to be like an integer or something like that. I do know about that aspect of ADA. Okay, thank you very much. Um, all right. Uh, Jupyter build and it's going to be a P, a free node. Uh, GPR. Okay, it does compile. Cool. Um, so now we're gonna always allocate only as much as needed, which is pretty cool. And uh, there we go. This worked. The more I see Ada, the more it feels like whoever made a VHD really loved Ada. Well, it's a language. The, both of these languages were actually created at the time when this kind of syntax was popular. So it's a very old syntax, right? So that's what it is. It's a very old syntax. Uh, there was like a trend on making languages look like this. I don't think there was like anyone who really liked it. It's like when you create a new language like today, what's going to be the syntax uh, that you're going to choose? It's probably going to be a C-like syntax because it's the syntax of the, uh, of the era, right? Of this uh, era. And maybe in the future, we're going to have different trends on syntaxes and people will look at these like C-like languages and say, well, what a fucking boomer, uh, boomer syntax, similar to this one. Um, so, for example, SQL has also a similar syntax, right? All right, so um, yeah, now we can read all of that. Uh, we managed to finally convert all of this thing, okay. So I think the, the main problem was caused by uh, me being tired, right? So if I was a little bit less tired, maybe I would figure out that a little bit faster. Uh, but yeah, because the only thing that were needed for me to figure out how to do this thing is to notice that stream element array is an alias to an array right and i know like i knew that i knew this information but i didn't make the next logical step okay if it's just an alias to an array well let's just index that thing then like why didn't i make that next logical step uh, probably because i'm just tired so that was the problem <laughs> i guess <laughs> um <clears throat> so yeah, that's probably what's the problem. Mm, okay. So it's a SSL. Uh, this one is a plain, plain text. Was originally developed at the uh, behest of the US Department of Defense. Oh, okay. That's actually very interesting. So maybe it's like a thing, like US military likes to, like, likes this kind of syntax. Um, all right, so, okay, it starts to make sense. It starts to make sense, at least. All of the pieces uh, fit together, so maybe the next time I'm going to have to work with the streams, it's not going to be that much of a pain in the ass. I should probably stop an hour ago, so <laughs> just to save my sanity. <laughs> uh, anyway, so this is another example. Mm-mm. Uh, so git uh, status, uh, let's add readme, free node, and src, so this is the status, and let's commit uh, add free node example, and let's push that uh, right into the repo. Let's push that right into the repo. Uh, if you're interested in these stupid examples that we came up with, uh, you can find them here. Uh, I still wish uh, we had a little bit more time, right? Because I still want to figure out how to do an SSL connection without, uh, you know, this certifi certificate problem, right? And once we figure out how to do an SSL connection, um, we could try to um, basically use that uh, info IRC. Um, I have two ideas actually. Is the first one is to make uh, IRC, uh, ADA IRC dependent on AWS, which is not that good of an idea because it's too fat of a dependency. 
uh, and the second idea, which is a little bit better, is to try to surgically remove the SSL in like code from AWS into its self-contained thingy, so we can have SSL uh, sockets, like library that uh, a library for other that can do SSL sockets, and integrate it into the library like uh, AD uh, IRC, so the uh, IRC can have like SSL support and whatnot. Um, so, but we don't really have time to do that anymore because I'm streaming for five hours. <laughs> uh, but I guess we uh, we learned something. Uh, yeah, I guess we learned something. I learned a lot today. I learned a lot today. But unfortunately, it is time for me uh, to go, boys and girls. It is time for me to go. Thanks, everyone, who's watching me right now. I really appreciate it. Have a good one. And I see you all tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, we're supposed to have a game development stream. And I think we're going to have a game development stream because I really want to work on this game a little bit. We need to do some stuff. Uh, check out our schedule for more information on uh, different projects we're working on and uh, check out our VODs channel uh, where we uh, archive all of our streams. This stream is going to be there but tomorrow we upload them on the next day. And check out the Discord, our Discord server for offline discussion with the community. We have a pretty cozy community. Uh, yeah. So, and let's maybe raid somebody. We haven't raided anybody for quite some time. Is anyone streaming Ada? I actually saw people streaming Ada on uh, science and technology section. So, P uh, Marvin, is he doing an English stream? Yeah, people doing Ada on. Uh, yeah, as they're doing. I really hope I pronounced your name correctly. Um, yeah. She, she doesn't stream. She actually inspired me to to look into AWS because I saw her stream. Um, all right, so uh, I think I'm gonna raid this spherical cow. I forgot I forgot the specific spelling of his nickname, uh, and I wish the website was a little bit faster. Uh, it doesn't really show me that. It's really bad. Uh, can I just zoom out a little bit? I cannot zoom out. It's less than possible. If I hide the chat, can I? Will I be able to see? Um, no, I still not able to see. This is such a horrible website. Holy fuck! Um, all right. Um, how can I extend the left panel? This is so bad. Like for me, it has to be like this size. There we go, only then I can extend. Okay, so it's not st streaming. Um, absolutely fucking horrible website, holy shit. Um, okay, PM Marin, he's probably... Is he... Okay, he's doing English stream, so it's actually written. So what is the uh, union fine time complexity? Is that disjoint unions? It kind of feels like disjoint unions, but I don't think it's just joint unions. I think it's just some some sort of unions. Okay. Um, I remember this data structure. Which one? Uh, union find? I don't remember this one. Huh. I'll probably look into it a little bit later. Um, okay. It's like half of the time I'm just waiting for Twitch to load up. Like, that doesn't happen with any of the website I use, seriously. It's so bad. Uh, all right. Get ready for the raid. Get ready for the raid, boys and girls. And I see you all uh, tomorrow. Love you all. Mwah.